Welcome back to another episode of Action Tune Bros. Uh, this is your host, Matthew Lewis of the Matthew Lewis Podcast Empire, and with me is my co-host with the mo-host, Ben Sturgeon. That was a weird way of saying it. Yeah. Hi, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Ben, and apparently I'm the co-host with the mo-host. The co-host with the most hoes. Yeah, with the most hoes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, know, I, know. I don't know if you guys knew this, but scientifically speaking... Ben is a hoe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hoe. Oh, who's out joining us once again? Friend of the podcast. <laughs> hey, yo, it's me, Chris, pro- friend of the podcast. Ba ba doo da ba doo ba. Oh, it's your classic catchphrase. You know what? <laughs> 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 no, you, you know, classic catchphrase, <laughs> Matt. What you need is is you you need like a button on your uh like on your keyboard yeah. to when you press it, it just plays the uh, friendly neighborhood Chris Both. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly neighborhood Chris <laughs> Yeah, friendly neighborhood Chris Yeah, we all have the Chris um, saved oh on our phones. And once, <laughs> once again, uh, we have been graciously accepted in Chris's apartment house thing. And, you know, every single time we say that on here, you know what we never do, Chris? What? We never thank you for letting us do this. Yeah, because you. You, let, you let two a- like two assholes come, on to, come into your home. Bring them on your recording equipment and laptops. Yeah, <laughs> equipment, laptops, taking up a lot of your space. Yeah, mind all your sodas. And, just, <laughs> and what do we do? We just fucking ream each other and ream the shows that we're watching. <laughs> Did you come in here? Did you wake me up? Did you bring me here? Oh well, no, I brought myself here. And all of a sudden, you're doing podcast recording recordings on me? Yeah, on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, what, they, what they don't know is our laptop and our microphone, they are on top of yeah, Chris Yeah, we are right currently now. resting these on top of Chris's belly. It's <laughs> very, it's very, very precarious. I, I basically can't move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Matt, what are we doing today? Uh, we are back with the second half of the first season of Primal. Oh, a shit. Yeah, we are. Brutal, beautiful and beautiful. Brutal. Yeah, is, beautiful yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, that's probably how I would pronounce it, because it is incredibly wonderful looking and incredibly gruesome, but it is brutal indeed. And you know what? Uh, again, this, like the first half, Gendy just has a way with telling a beautiful story Without a single goddamn word. <laughs> Not a single one. Uh, yeah, absolute beautiful storytelling continues into this half of the season. Uh, more dino and prehistorical facts are on hand, don't worry. But yeah, this, I like, I think um, this second half of the season I do like probably more than the first, but I'll say that my favorite episode is still uh, Tear Under the Blood Moon, but we do have some that come close this time, including uh, what was my least favorite episode, that I really did not like, but upon rewatch, I have probably the most notes on. <laughs> but we'll oh, get there. One we'll of get... the episodes that we're going to Oh, yeah, cover. One of, yeah, one of these this half. Right. I really did not like the episode the first yeah, time, but this time I really liked I'm, it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, my favorite uh, of this, because you said this is, we already said this is the second half of season one. Yeah. Of all of season one, probably one of my fe- my favorite episodes is in this bi- in this batch. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that, obviously, but of course. just... Oh my goodness! I, I do. I, I agree with you. Also, the second half of season one is probably my favorite. It just it's more fun. Like they had different ideas, working oh, yeah. like working with different ideas, and just they executed them super well. Um, Gendy and your team of people working on this, you guys did a fantastic job with this. Yeah, and every time I think about this show, all I didn't want to do is just like reopen one of my fucking prehistoric knowledge textbooks that I read on my own free time, even though I'm not in college anymore. Uh, just fucking read about dinosaur facts and prehistoric animals, and it's just so fucking fun and beautiful and awesome. And yes, there are going to be some, uh, some of us, aka me, are going to be asking about some dinosaur facts, and Matt, of course, is yeah, definitely yeah. going to be helping with that. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy but also, crap. this episode is also chock full of um, lots of theories about this half of the season because there's a lot of weird things that occur in for the first time. And they do try to people do try to tie them theory like you know theory crafting wise to other Gendarkovsky projects, uh, but we'll get to those when we get to them. Yeah, huh. well, well, <laughs> getting questioning on side as the, 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 the Gendi versus the Gendi versus. Well, I mean, hey, they, they, he has established stuff in the past, but we will get there. <laughs> well, <laughs> shall we get started then? Yeah, let's get started on season one, episode six, Scent of, of Prey. Yeah. It opens up after the aftermath of of that crazy ape fight. Just tons and tons of bloody bodies. Oh and, my god, yes. The massacre. Yeah, just piles and piles of bodies as we see that Fang is still down and non-responsive. It is a very, very somber, chill, like, low-volume like intro to the scene. Yep, and then we see, um, you know, what happened at the end was, we, you know, Fang is 
practically dead. Yep, and Spear and, is screaming to the heavens, thinking that Fang is actually 100% dead. And then he starts walking away, and of course, you know, it, it, in reality, Fang is not dead. Yep, she, she begins coughing up some blood as we see that she is still alive. He very alive, yeah. Her. He tries to check her, you know, pulse and like see if she, how she's doing. He does go and get her some sacks of water that are hanging on the side from the monkey um, thing. But as he's going to get that water, we see tons of very large vultures circling oh, yes. the area. Oh, yes. The vultures. Oh, yeah. They yeah, begin to eat the eight men remains that are around. And every once in a while, they will stare over at Fang being like, hmm. That big old meaty thing dead yet? <laughs> nope. Spear <laughs> scares them off by waving his uh, spear, of course, at them, just yelling Spear and waves himself. Yeah, he waves himself at them uh, and begins to try to feed Fang some water. Yep. He's, and, yeah. as of course, as this is happening... And using mud to heal her wounds. Yeah. Yeah, which actually, Matt... You might know this more, more than I, because obviously today we have different sanitation things. Of course. Does that actually help and not actually hurt? Um, I feel like the wounds would have gotten infected. It's pretty clear. He's using just water and dirt. It's probably not that dangerous. Oh, yeah, he, you're right. Because especially, like, Yeah, especially because the immune systems of dinosaurs and Neanderthals probably is far different from ours modern ones. So probably putting mud to try to seal the wound as best you can is probably per- the and best they could do. <laughs> perhaps there's some credence to the phrase, like, rub some dirt in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, 100%, yeah. Um, and like you said, it's probably not as bad because, I mean, obviously, if they're drink, if they, he was using some of the drinking water, yeah, you drinking know, which water has to be clean. And arena dirt, that's probably fine. <laughs> just hopefully he didn't get any blood on it. Well, I mean, well, it's full of blood already, don't worry. Right. Um, but, but, and you also, know, it can't be worse than the fucking crazy, uh, like, stabs and punch wounds that she suffered before that fucking fight. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, he's, you know, trying to patch up wounds and stuff. Yep. Even we, more, uh, the, I called them buzzards. Yeah, but, yeah the they're buzzards vultures. continue to just circle just, around. And of course, they're just staring at him, like, like eating some of the other things, you know, fighting over other ape-man meat. Yeah. And they're just staring over, like... She dead yet? Yeah. No? Spear starts hurrying okay. up, patching Fang. Like, okay, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Um, he tries to push her, but she is way too heavy for him to lift, and which is completely dead weight. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's, like, literally trying to lift her up and drag her. Yeah, but, he can't. You know, can't. Uh, so he begins to use that rack with the water and skins on it to make kind of like a bamboo, um, what the heck are they called? Like the a sled or stretcher? Or a... a stretcher, yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go, yeah. Yeah, he has to make a stretcher for her. Uh, as he ties the pipes up, and he kind of just tries to roll her onto it. He also, I've, to, I've said waving a spear, but also at this point he makes his new spear. Yep. Because it got destroyed by in that fight with um, Krog, Krog, or Korg. Or, or Krog. Big, big Ape Man. <laughs> or Corgi. Yeah, yeah. Corgi. <laughs> <laughs> with Corgi. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, he begins to dig a trench <clears throat> underneath her to try to roll her over onto the stretcher. Um, and, like, he's doing all this might continuing to still try to push her. It's unaffected, but eventually she does end up rolling over. I don't know if it was, like, her doing it or him. Oh, it, it was definitely him because she was at the point of she could not move. Yeah, but she was, like, a couple times while he's, like, cleaning her up, she has, like, open her eyes and, like, look at him a little bit. Yeah, but so. I, I think that's, like, all the strength she has at this point. Yeah, but then he finally does manage to get her on a stretcher, and he begins lifting it up with all of his strength, and they begin to travel through a uh, large and, and we're talking, like, um, you know, in, um... Like in China, the guys who the rickshaw, yeah, thing? the rickshaws, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're talking like that's what he's doing with a like of maybe a ton or two uh, weight weight of a dinosaur. Yeah, huge and dinosaur. This, this man, dude. Oh yeah. Holy crap, he's got guns. <laughs> yeah, he's busting ass trying to run through the forest as long as he can. But eventually, well, he no, does. he doesn't even run. Oh, he no, he's like slowly walk. trudging. Yeah, slowly trudging with this. But he eventually gets too tired and they stop at a lake. Yep. And he looks at his hands and they are like blistered. They the are fucking raw hell. as shit. Um, as the sun begins to go down, he spots a wild dog yep. staring I, at him. More specifically, a hyena. No, Even well, like, it's, it's not. A, well, hyena. It's not exactly a hyena. But I'll get into. Do you want me to get into what these are now or a might bit? as well? All right. They resemble African painted dogs, but, or like, um, what are they called? Um, either African wild dogs or painted wolves. Uh, there is another name for them that I can't pronounce. It's like Xeno, Xeno Scion. That is what they are called. Oh, I was going to say, let me take a look at it. Yep, there you go. Uh, yeah, Xeno Scion, I think is actually yeah. how you would say that. Yeah, they were called doles in the, um, Far Cry Primal game, which they, they do, like, they're, they're given the, um, yeah, the t- shape of the ears, shape of the mouth, and the muzzle, and the coloring. They do resemble African wild dogs, a.k.a. painted wolves, or these, you know, sign, which are an actual prehistoric animal. Mm, okay, yeah. But yeah like, he sees, to me, they, they looked very similar to, oh, like, hyenas. they're making hyena noises. And they, yeah. they do have the, like, their back halves are, like, their back legs are lower than normal, which is what hyena's and, posture is. And, and by the way, this, uh, this Xenocyon yeah. is just sitting there and staring. Yep, we see the right eyes. And e- even, like, even, uh, like, Spears looking over, like, uh-huh, you, you're not gonna try anything, and it's just... It's just standing there, 
menacingly. <laughs> uh, they be, they light a fire at night as the red eyes continue to watch them, and he's kind of like you know. Yep, in him. the in the darkness with a whole circle of flames, mind yep. you. In the morning, Fang is a little bit more alert, but still completely immobile. Yep. Uh, Fang feels replenished and a little bit more better in the daylight as he kind of stretches out and gets ready to continue to pull her spear. Through. You mean yeah, spear? Yeah, I always get things mixed up. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and then spear has an idea. He's not going to do the raw, like, rickshaw kind of pole thing. So instead, he has a better idea. He literally makes, a vi- like, a vine system where mm-hmm. it's, like, over his arms like a backpack, but also, like, tied against his waist as well. And he just starts pulling her that way. Yep. That way his hands don't have to die yep. on him. And also a little bit less stress on his back, hopefully. <laughs> and, of course, as he's doing this... There's not only a uh, Xenoscion just yeah. following him, watching him. I literally refer to them as dogs in my notes. You know, you know, <laughs> that's going to be a lot better. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, the, the, not uh, only does he notice a dog on his left. But now there's another one. Oh, yeah, there's uh, a second one on the right and side. And they track him all day and night. They continue to walk past them. Uh, they are keeping pace with him in the entire long walk that he has. Yeah, these motherfuckers just do not quit. Like, they yeah. are... I'm just, that, I was just, like, watching them wondering, like, 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 guys, surely you can find food somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And they're like... That's a big-ass T-Rex, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is tasty. That, that is but yeah, I mean, just... They're just tracking them, just watching as they move. Uh, Spear does... I almost pulled it. Like, oh, like, over the course of multiple days, too. I'm just like, how, how are you not, like, so hungry that you just, like, go find somewhere else? I don't know. Well, they, well we learn later there's a pretty big pack that they need to feed. They're like, yo, this 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 fucking T-Rex and this human could feed us probably a pretty damn lot. Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, but, I mean, you know, just uh, day in and day out, yeah. just, he walks, these two dogs appear, and at one point... He finds a cave. Yeah, he finds a cave. And he goes into the cave, and the two dogs just sit out there and just... They walk up and they just like start getting closer. Like, okay, okay, yep. is he in there? And then he just and then Spear just runs out and chases them away. Yep. But I was gonna say, um, there like a lot of times there are like I mentioned last time there are animatics of this thing that Gendy Tartakovsky does all the like monster and animal noises for, which was pretty funny. Um, there was a deleted scene with an animatic with uh, there was another dog with those two that was approaching the cave. One of them actually enters the cave and Spear like kills it, and then they eat it the next day. But I guess he cut that scene for some reason. No idea why, Barbara, because it's too brutal. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah, too brutal. Or, Points or maybe, at the previous yeah, episode. Or it's going to happen later in this episode. <laughs> that or maybe it just had to like cut down on, on and like fill screen time within a certain... Because yeah. like, you can I mean, I don't know if this was like, filmed on, or shown on TV. I love if it's an adult swim. Yeah, it would be shown on it TV. Was, yeah. so, so it has to be cut down to, to, fill, to fill like a half hour, like 22 minute segment you know yeah. so so maybe maybe it just had to be a deleted scene yeah that's that, also that, probably that's just to, probably just to raise the tension of the threat of these dogs because it's like mm-hmm. these things are kind of tiny they're kind of mammals they're not like big ass ape man or dinosaurs it's just a small little thing of, dino- of uh, dogs they're not too much of a threat and like having them kill one that early just like to makes it like releases tension too early so let's draw it out for a long part of this episode because it's just like more ominous having the pack watching them continually right, right. until but they seem too speaking tired speaking of which uh that night uh, he has like no uh, uh, spear. I almost said thing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing as you. Um, has some fire, and when he looks out, there's three dogs now. Yeah, but also he spots a tiny little back exit of the cave, a tiny little yep, yep a little a little like alcove where he like can look out, and then he can like crawl above. Yep. And he just notices there's three dogs now. All right, so now this night he outside of the cave puts a couple of fires around it so they do not try to enter. Uh, as more eyes peek in from the distance, as the number increases. Yep, they just keep multiplying. Yep, and this time at night, he's like uh, Spear and Fang are sleeping in the cave, but then some nasty ass ape. I, I just assumed they were aphids. <laughs> started crawling mm, no, in. No, no, too big. Oh yeah, and they're fucking rough as hell. They're pre. Um, they they are the uh, the precursor of Conchu. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yes, because yeah, they are <laughs> incredibly disgusting and annoying, and apparently really rock fucking hard. Um, at night, these nasty little aphid-like things are crawling all over him, and he also sees them all swarming all over Fang, which is terrifying. Yep, and like, like, and, and it's fine because he's just like batting them off a little bit, but then he picks one up, and in typical like prehistoric like monster kind of thing, it just looks at him like, huh? Then it just fangs. Yeah, and then he kind of drops it, and then he keeps trying to like brush them off, but their shells are incredibly hard and scratch up his hands. Yep, as scratch up his hands, and so he starts stabbing one. And, like we said, they're really tough. It only, like, dents it a little bit, and it's unaffected. But he actually figures this out quickly and flips it over and yep. stabs the... Underbelly. Yep, the underbelly. 
Yep, he manages to finally kill them, and then with his spear, he begins to thrash and bash and kill a bunch of them. And now he has some delicious, weird, like, hard bug things to eat in the morning, so he starts cooking those and eating them. <laughs> well, he's cooking them and feeding them the fang. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, finally, in the morning, he begins to barricade the cave with tons and tons of rocks. And Fang is way more alert than usual, because yep. she's actually, like, like sitting up from a laying position, looking around like... Dude, what are you doing? Why are you stop? Why are you, you know, st like put putting rocks? Are you are you making this my tomb? What? Yeah, but as she looks around, she realizes that he is not there, and we hear some raucous noise from outside as we hear just tons and tons of those dogs out there. Yep. And then up, uh, and then uh, after a bit of a scuffle that we hear, not see, we see one of the rocks move. He jumps in, and, uh, like Spear jumps in one of the gaps, and it's small enough where all the dogs can do is just peek their nose in and sniff. Yep, they were getting to try to crawl in there, and Spear looks around. He's very, very beaten up, but he sees that Fang is now on her feet. We see her legs are still a little bit stiff, and she's a little bit painful, but Spear's like, okay, uh, you rest. He like, kind of gestures to her to lay down and rest. Uh, you have to take and care then, of her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my, th this part was just like, you know what? I can I can go with this. Because he's like, you know, he, he notices that she's still wounded, but she's doing a lot better. And then he looks at two of those bugs and remembers the time his hand got scratched up. So what does he do? He uses the legs as little handles and he puts them on, like two of the bugs on, like friggin' brass, brass knuckles. knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I wrote brass knucks in my notes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, he runs the brass Canucks. Yeah, brass yep, Canucks. Brass Canucks. <laughs> Ooh, boy. <laughs> As he runs outside, we see dozens and dozens of these dogs outside. Dude, dude, dude. Hundreds. Yeah, he just starts punching the shit out of them, just completely brutally killing these poor things. Yep. Uh, he's punching as many as he can, but he keeps getting overpowered until Fang bursts out of the cave. Yep. She <laughs> is starts... fully healed, and she fucking Decimate. Yeah, she was just chomping these freaking dogs in half left and right, and it is just insane. As just Even like, like using her tail to like sweep yeah, a whole bunch of them, whole big and then, then they, you know, they actually start. Well, a lot of them start running away because yeah. they're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, but okay. as they're just like, they're like, you see this random punching and like biting and slashing, and as the episode just ends, we just see them just like, ah, and then the episode just cuts the credits. <laughs> yep, cuts the credits, and uh, who, how, boy, howdy. Yeah, woo, boy. Uh, yeah, this. I love the aesthetic of this pack of um, these, whatever the fuck you know, Scion or African Painted Wolves. They look so fucking cool, and like, I, of course, I'm a huge dog fan, so I'm just upset seeing so many get brutally massacred, but I'm like, it's... <laughs> I, I'm a dog fan, so I just, I, I just love seeing hundreds of them get murdered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. No, I, I don't like it. <laughs> but Man, yeah. I was rooting for the dogs, because gee whiz, that's yeah. horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, but say, like, yeah, just seeing those, also just more highly evolved creatures up against these like ridiculous Neanderthal and dinosaurs is so fucking funny. right. But yeah, the um, also a convalescing episode which you'd rarely get in any kind of show. It's like the team having gone through a huge fight and then just actually having a recovery episode of just like let's just fucking chill the fuck out for a second. Yeah, no, I mean <laughs> that was good. That that's like honestly, especially how it ended with him worried about Thing. Yeah. I'm really glad that they just focused on dude. Dinosaur is hurt. Heal Dino. Heal Dino Dog. Yeah, she was like, literally got like, her leg was like punched in by uh, Korg and her like head was bashed, her like ribs were destroyed. She was like completently like decimated by that giant <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, she, she got really fucked up, man. <laughs> oh yeah, it was like a brutal fight, but yeah, just having her rested and completely out of commission this whole episode. Also, just like showing the relationship of them even more so than like all the times that they've rescued each other, just like entirely, one's completely out of commission and the other's completely taking care of them. It's just a fun, fun dynamic. Oh, absolutely. Um, got a question for the day after this episode? Oh no, just talking about that convalescing. Oh, the um, episode did air out of order. This one was aired... Also, I told you it was like a year hiatus after the ape fight to this episode. And um, I'll say that this episode aired actually after the next one we're going to cover... Which is oh, very so, so, so 6 and 7 were just flip-flop. Yeah, they were. And you had to wait an entire year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a fun-ass episode. I, what do you I, think of... Oh. I hate when, when, when companies do that. Like, like that, That's like a really great way to just like kill interest in the show and cause mass confusion. I mean, look at Firefly. Yeah, that got oh fucked over by God, that. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, but it was just like... There, I'll go into more <laughs> reasons as to why the Weird Order aired like that when we cover the next one, but... Um, this episode I just very much like because it was so chill, as all this whole series is. Um, going yeah. back and also just seeing the team back together, seeing them whoop ass. Mm -hmm. um, I love the painted dogs as an enemy. Um, yeah, they did really good. <laughs> um, 
And, you know, honestly, this is one of the reasons why I'm glad I wait about some shows, because I don't have to wait a year to be like, is the dino okay? Yeah, it's been dead. I don't have to dead. sit on it and worry about it. dead for good. Uh, but yeah, I, I very much, it was a fun episode. It was, didn't feel like filler, even though it was just a completely chill, low stakes episode. And honestly, I, I, don't think it, I don't think it would constitute as filler, because, well, literally, big fight with eight men. Next, next logical step would be healing the dino yeah, and also the yeah. show's not very like narrative focused anyway <laughs> yeah the, the episode was very focused on on or like, like that was kind of the core plot of the episode was just fang's recovery mm-hmm. and you know it's, it's kind of hard to like make an entire episode about that without you know a set piece to put in to just kind of insert in there and right. so in that aspect to me it almost feels like a filler but i wouldn't i wouldn't properly classify this as a filler episode it's, it's more like it's a serious canon episode with filler elements. Yeah, you know what? That's a fair. That's a fair point of yeah. calling I'll it. I see actually, your point. Actually, um, compared, to, like I said, this show was episodic um, until this one. This is the only one where the consequences of the previous episode actually continued on to the next one. So this one is kind of like the opposite of filler because it's the first time there's been continuity. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, you you are right because every episode prior to the eight fight. Yeah. Has literally just been kind of like an adventure of the day kind of thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. or sorry, adventure of the week because it yeah. was every yeah. week. <laughs> it's like a oh god, I was thinking about this when we were um, I was watching episodes earlier today. Uh, what was it called? It was like um, uh, murder avoidance adventures with fear and Spain. Damn it! Fear and Spain. Fear and Spain. Spain. <laughs> when my brain does that. Dude, be afraid of the Spanish guys because it's fear in Spain. <laughs> well, I, I, I have put that out there and, uh, and I'm not happy about it. Hey, hey, hey Chris, yeah. just remember when we were doing our Spawn episode, yeah. I said that Lois Griffin works for Wanda Blake. You're allowed to have your moment <laughs> in the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. But no, but honestly... But that, that and that's the great thing about Gendy is he he can do shit like this. Oh, also, Chris, that's called a spoonerism. Whenever you mix up the like begin- spoonerism, yeah, it's like yeah, it's a but, common thing. It's like a comic like uh, usually a comedy thing for like uh, switching up the first either like phrase or whatever. Like we said, like yeah, uh, like, you mixing you or like yeah, people do that all the time for like just like random <laughs> stuff. And it's Lathew called Mewis. yeah, yeah. I see. Um, of course, uh, Briscoe. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. So, spoonerism. Said, yeah, spoonerism. Spooner? Spoonerism, yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Sorry, for some reason I thought you said spooder. I'm like, that's just a silly way of saying spider. No, no, yeah, of course. No, it's a, yeah, spoonerism is just what it's called. Because like, oh. there are some people who just, like, do it, like, constantly just for, like, either a oh or on purpose. So, so, yeah. Yeah, but see, see, it's funny because, um, like, Chris and I, we do that randomly. Because, yeah. obviously, you never do it on purpose. Of course, yeah. And... Every single time he does it, it's fucking gold. <laughs> um, um, but anyway, yeah, but um, yeah, it, like like I said, you know, like like you said, Chris, I ha- I think I agree with you on this one, where it's like it doesn't, it's not classified as a filler, but it does have like elements where it could be a filler kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, but all in all, great a great way to uh, you know a fun, continue on a fun yeah. tension building episode. Yeah, like, yeah. like with with uh, yeah with murder avoidance uh, adventures. Yeah, murder avoidance <laughs> adventures as they always as those two love to do. Yep. But now let's get on to probably the most well known episode of this series. Ep- uh, yeah. Episode uh, episode seven, right? Yeah, episode seven of Primal Dino the Crisis Egg of T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Dino Crisis 3. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, episode 7. Plague, Plague of, of Madness. Madness. Funny story. Well, actually, we'll get there. But it starts off with, what are they? I was thinking it opens up on a gigantic cliff, and then we see a bunch of sauropods. Sauropods, okay. That's the name of that type of thing. long dinosaurs. Right, 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 yeah. Because, uh, look, I'm one of those guys that's not, like, knowledgeable on dinosaurs, uh, everyone listening. So... I'm trying to avoid saying Brontosaurus because Brontosaurus is not a dinosaur. Mm, they're not Brachiosaurus either, but I'll get into what they are in a second. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Why would you put Sora into a pod? Are you going to let him out? <laughs> yes. Well, we also saw Kingdom Hearts 2's intro. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> they already did that in Kingdom Hearts Looks like their summer yeah. vacation is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so, and they're just doing what uh, yeah, Sora pods eating, do. They're eating, drinking, uh, worrying, caring Hunters for babies. Hunters are wa- running around kicking them for berries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Monster Hunter 4 reference, guys. Is that what they do? I have no idea what the point of those things is. Those, those, uh... No, there, there's a there's literally a mission in oh, Monster okay, Hunter okay. 4 where you have to collect a berry, and the only way, it, like, you have to read the description, because if you just 
start killing them, you won't find out what you do. You literally have to use the kick emote, and then <laughs> drop a shiny, and it's the item you need. Oh, it boy. says it in the description that nobody reads. Yeah, of course. That sounds like a terrible mission. But anyway. Uh, but, yeah, we see them taking care of the babies and everything, and these, of course, are Argentinosaur. Oh, they are Argentinosaur. Yeah. I was like, sauropod is just the term for the long, any long neck dinosaur. Well, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Argentinosaur specifically is what these are. Uh, they are peacefully just enjoying the company of each other, just eating, doing mating rituals, rubbing necks, just running around eating food. It's just a very peaceful scene. And then fucking Larry appears. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the bushes, we see a rabid, zombified, I wrote Hadrosaur, which is just any water-based dinosaur, but, but it, it would specifically be a, is a Parasaurolophus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, I almost, I almost have that one right, because yeah. you keep talking about it. Yeah, they don't yeah. think specifically, but and, it's some sort of Hadrosaur, I'm guessing, due to its now, its back into Parasaurolophus. We know we're talking about Argentinosaurs, which are giant. Yeah. But this one, the, the, this uh, Parasaur... Parasaurolophus? That one. Yeah. Um, Parasaurolophus. Yeah, yeah Parasaurolophus. Um, it's like tiny compared to an actual would, like, yeah, adult I would say size. like the, the, uh, if, uh, yeah, Inside Baseball, for one of my characters in a D&D game, they had a Parasaurolophus as a mount. They are pretty damn big. Right. Compared to a human. But like, uh, actually compared to a fucking Argentinosaur, so they're fucking minuscule. Like, well, right. <laughs> but, but, even, but even like... To the size of, like, how tall... This, this thing was, like, up to, like, the very bottom of the ankles of this thing. Yep. And it's... And we're talking, like... Like Matt zombified. said. <laughs> zombified. and ugly. We're talking, like, bubbly, yellow, all yellow skin. Pieces of it literally ripped off. You can see some of its spine and stuff. And the most unique factor of it, it has, like, red and white... Well, red swirly. and yellowish, swirly yeah. eyes. Yep. And this thing... Oh, and sharp teeth, for some reason. It's also, yeah. What were you saying, Chris? Oh, well, oh what, how would you compare it to, like, the, the size of this Parasaurolophus to, say, the... Size-wise, how would you compare it to Fang? Uh, to a Tyrannosaur? Probably maybe, like, half as big as a Tyrannosaur, I would say. Okay. Oh, you're talking yeah. about a fully grown one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, um, like, uh, Parasaurolophus, I would guess maybe 10 or 12 feet, which would probably be, like, the roof of this, like, the ceiling of this building. Okay. Like, from floor to ceiling. And then a T-Rex is, I think, presumably maybe close to, like, 15 or 20 almost, but I'm not, I'm not 100% oh, okay. sure. okay. But, yeah, so it would be, like, a little bit bigger than that. But, of course, of course they're mostly always on their, like, their I was also legs. prepared to ask, like, uh, how would you compare it to the size of, like, an Apsaros from Monster Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> probably about the, yeah, honestly, Apsaros is probably a little bit bigger. I thought it was Aptodoth. No, no Apsaros is the uh, Ankylosaurus. Okay, okay, okay. I thought I meant the yeah. yeah Apsaros <laughs> is the Ankylosaurus. Aptonoth is the uh, the the other herbivore that you With know the, have the, the four. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The one that looks you. like what's it called? <laughs> um, it, it kind of has like a Parasaurolophus. Yeah, head. it looks like a Parasaurolophus. <laughs> so um, I got them mixed up. But yeah, but um, yeah, Chris is talking about the Apsaros, the Ankylosaurus ones yeah, okay, from the yeah. waist. Yeah, about that. Well, those are smaller than a hunter, so. I mean, no, like no, no, no maybe ones are not in world at least. I think the the in world they're like. A little bit taller than a hunter. Okay. I, yeah. Okay. So probably about like like maybe not maybe not twice the size of it, but maybe like one and a half times the size of a of an Apsaros. Oh, okay. Uh, you know probably. what? I'm gonna I'm, like. I'm gonna pull you, Chris. Okay. Compared to a popo, a fully oh, grown popo. Uh, those popos are huge. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're, they're fucking. Yeah, but damage. somehow more weaker than any of the other things. I right. feel like. And um, I still have yet to find the. Oh, uh, both monsters. Anyway, we'll play more anyway. monster references later. Um, yeah, the hatchlers kind of like running around going. Yeah, yeah, literally yeah, just like Jerry's zombie just, noises. Oh, sorry, I said Larry. Larry's <laughs> just rolling around and, and like this uh, Argentina Argentinosaurus. Yes, thanks for asking that while I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I saying that one right? Argentinosaurus. Yeah, yeah. Ar Argentinosaurus is literally, like, in his eye, you can see, like, him looking down, like, fucking like, what whatever, that continues thing? eating, and J Larry's over here, like, rah, 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 and then bites his ankle. Yeah. Literally, because that's how big he is. He's, like, ankle size, he's like, Nyeh. takes a big old chunk out of it, to the point where even the this um, Argentinosaurus is just like, Dude, ow! Kicks of, like, it. Yeah, he like flings it off and he goes flying into a tree. <laughs> and it, it like kills it. Just, it just kind of looks at the wound later. Like, well, this won't get problematic later. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, when it when it when this when when Larry dies, um, the eyes actually unswirl and become normal all red. Yeah, it also vomits up a bunch of blood. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, but um, also I was gonna say minor dinosaur fact that they are they do theorize given the size of sor most sauropods, an injury like that would probably take a while for it to get to the actual brain. <laughs> Which honestly, it's a weird fact. Though. Like, yeah, if they were like injured in their leg or back or tail, it would honestly take a very long time for them to like actually register like the pain. Days to weeks, maybe. Um, no, probably just like maybe a couple minutes to an hour, maybe. Like, it takes a while for them to process. Like, oh, oh, there's an injury back there. Oh, like, oh, oh, so oh, okay. they get bit. They don't feel the pain because it takes about an hour for it to be like. The pain receptors to get to the brain. Yeah, or also like, like a fake or anything oh. like that. Yeah, it's like weird. Gotcha. Like, okay. I mean, that makes so sense. Weird. They're really like, tall. Yeah, but uh, there's like a whole lot of weird biology to dinosaur stuff like that. But then after. But yeah, we see him kind of like wandering. We see him kind of walking off, feeling kind of normal, and then bam, cut to him like fucking completely green skinned, like tongue bubbling out of his and mouth, like... feeling like shit, like. <laughs> and then, hey Chris, what happens next? Oh yeah, it's ter- uh, its skin turns green and its eyes uh, and nose are running. Because yeah. he, he's also a thirsty boy. Boy, he seems a little thirsty. Oh huh, yeah, he, he, he does. He does seem like it does seem like a thirsty boy. So then we get to the po- so we get to the point where like he's like uh, walking around, just not sure what to do. Uh, it's like, oh man, I don't feel so good. Oh look, oh look, there's some water. Okay, let's start drinking some water and drinking some water, and drinking some water. And like I'm watching this and I'm just thinking like, you know, it feels like this is supposed to be a point in the story where it just like like, infects the water supply with the virus and just, like, okay, so maybe he gets some saliva in there, he's drinking, he's drinking, eh, you know, like, 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 maybe some backwash will get in there, maybe that'll get poisoned, and then, like, just all of a sudden, he just starts, like, spewing out just a jet stream of red liquid, presumably blood, (laughs) into the water hole for a good, like, minute straight <laughs> and the moment that starts happening I go from like you know that could, that could potentially uh, poison the water supply uh, na- that's definitely <laughs> so that, that definitely poisons the water supply <laughs> or, or more specifically somebody's poisoned the water hole <laughs> but the, you know what the best part about it is is after that whole minute of it vomiting probably blood into the water it stops for like 10 seconds and then it does it again yeah and it's just like, holy... And even his buddies are looking like, dude, are you feeling all right? You yeah. good? And then... And, and we finally do see its eye swirl at this point. Yep, like the, the eye starts to the swirl, and then it goes ape shit and starts beating the shit out of everyone. I was going to say, we see... Beating the shit out of everyone. <laughs> we have a nice little cut of him, like, its eyes swirling to, like, the sauropods. Other ones being like, okay, it's getting a little cold. Let me cover up these eggs. <laughs> just like, and the next, next thing we see, he's just like, ah! Just like rolling to the, just like <laughs> zombie <laughs> form. and just all those eggs just get fucking deleted. Yeah, and all and all of the uh, ser- uh seropod, sauropods are just like uh uh-uh, not okay with this, and they you know do the head thing where they go kerpow and. And apparently he didn't like that, because then he starts murdering the shit out of everyone. Oh yeah, he is just stomping and flailing and screeching, smashing every single set of eggs, and they're all like, oh my god, what the fuck? And, yep. just, like, and he's like biting everyone with insane. his sharp teeth, because apparently he gets those now. Yeah, he's like ripping out necks, whipping heads, it's just Keep talking incredibly about- fucking brutal and graphic. It's like killing all the adults and smashing the eggs. And Chris made the best comment at this point. He's like, oh... So this is just the pre- prehistoric T virus. Got it. <laughs> or, or more aptly, the D virus. Yeah. Um, no, I said, honestly, way, probably what it would be. Called. I'm trying to think of like the fucking um, uh, all the fucking other things. What the fuck are they? The besides the mold, besides Ouroboros. Uh, uh, not not the not the one in four. Let's plug us. Uh, Ouroboros was in five, and then yeah, the fucking various T and G um, viruses, and then like C virus yeah, was yeah, one yeah. of them, and then the, then the mold, and then there's the yeah. A, the B, the C, the Z, the E, the F. I'll say maybe this was D because it was before Wal- uh, let's say Wolbachia, which is <laughs> the fucking <laughs> Metal Gear. No, uh, the fucking Ouroboros, and yeah, and those plug us before that was the whatever um, the fuck this is. <laughs> now, now, Chris, yeah, when we were doing that joke with the uh, the name of it, I said Dino Crisis Three because there's only two Dino Crisis games. <laughs> well, are, are you familiar with that game series? I I did watch uh, the the. Uh, the Video that the Spear Hunter recently put out oh, about yeah. mm-hmm. it, but other than that, no, I'm not familiar. Literally, like if I'm gonna be brief about it, mm-hmm. uh, Dinosaur Resident Evil. I, yeah. I, I literally have heard that comparison, yeah, that's but I, yeah, was, yeah. I, that's, aside from that, I don't, I don't know much about it. Yeah, th- that's all I know about it too. Uh, other than like it is a cult classic. But anyway, yeah, only in Dino Crisis, they're not zombie dinosaurs; they're just dinosaurs. But yeah, in this in, case, it's Resident Evil Dino. <laughs> yeah, we see him just whipping. I love the whipping with the tail because that's also a theorizing that the sauropods did. Uh, biting throats, stomping, at least like stomping big ones' backs, and it's just completely disgusting and gory. Yeah. <laughs> 
we cut to Spang, or, well, Spang? Fear and Spang, just kind of... <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Just wandering into the scene like, what the hell happened I'm, I'm, glad, I can, I'm glad I can just produce memes, jokes, and, and content for you guys. Okay, the front of the pod. You know, you know, you know the, the, the one YouTuber guy who does the emotional damage? Yeah. Have you seen his, uh, like, uh, a ghost haunts his house? Because Spear and Fang walk in and they are all like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fear, uh, fear. I don't really. I um, unironically almost did it. Okay. Fang is nervous that. and smells the, the like what the hell this weird smell is, and then Spear sees all the smashed eggs. And he's like, okay, something fucked up happened. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Like, even, like you know, you know something's wrong when there's meat on the ground, and even Fang is like, I'm not eating that shit. Yeah, something fucked up happened here. Uh, suddenly, the giant zombie appears behind them and begins to give chase. And they are just kind of, like, running for their lives as this thing is, like, incomprehensibly big for them to try to fight. Well, right, and, and like, this thing is obviously, you know, size different, so he, just one step and he could probably, like, yeah. just be as... A, but it's this thing is also, yeah, yeah, barreling through trees like they're nothing. Yeah. And even at one point leaps to try to grab, the, to try to, like, get at them. I'm like, dude... Chill the fuck out. You're yeah. not a zombie from 28 days later. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it is because of how fast it's going. Remember, it's just proportional. Uh, but yeah, they run for their lives. Spear manages, like, riding on her back, jumping on her legs. They continue to just try to dodge and run and go through trees. They're just smashing through every rock and everything in its path. Oh. Eventually, it does get stuck in some trees, and they begin to slide downhill to try to escape it. And then uh, they land on a singular rock, and, uh, well, those trees are not very strong because yeah. it... Two slides down, like it leaps yeah. and slides down. It breaks through the cliff and survives uh, after seemingly dying a sec- like a second time, <laughs> just like completely like chasing after them. They give they like uh, fear. You almost made me do it again with the fear and spang. I didn't do it. Bang and spear. It's all your fault, Ben. No, uh, it's the prince's fault. Bang and spear. I no, 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 Matt said it. It's, it's, it's your fault. I'm okay. Not my fault. Not my fault. You know what? I stand highly corrected. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it falls off the cliff and seemingly dies as they hide in the cave because they have no way of getting around this fucking thing until well, night falls. Oh uh, yeah, and this is this is like after it gets stuck in like in between two rocks. Yeah, and it's like trying to break free. Oh no, no, that's 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 near the end. Is that later? No, yeah, they're chasing it. They chase it through the forest. No, floors. you're right, you're right. They fall it, down like, the cliff lands, and it finally it like they, yeah, it, like lands they land like that thing and it starts flailing around. No, yeah, at this point it's like seemingly died and it's like a, yeah, a and, it, and it like and it like falls over and it's dead. Yep, it's just go, dead. They go into they like are uh, going to the cave and kind of sleep for the night. And this is when Spear has his crazy dream. Oh, fucking fever ass dream! Yeah, crazy. He's getting chased Lord. by the, the by, by the giant zombie, gets bit, and he starts melting. Like his body, you can see like the insides gurgling a little bit, and he starts melting. Like even his face starts melting, where you can see like the skull. Yeah, the flesh and the and, like, and then the muscle underneath it. Like basically, he, he literally melts down to bone. Yeah. Yep, and then he looks over and. Fang is getting bitten, and she too is starting to melt like this. And then he wakes up. He sees from like his... her whole back get bitten up. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then he An wakes entire up chunk his... just like yeah. just straight up, just like take it out. Yeah, just oh my big, God. big old bite mark, a bit bite mark worth of space is is now there. Yeah, a, and then that's brutal. when Spear wakes up, and he and he and uh, Fang just start sneaking, looking. Yeah, it seems to be still dead. Sneaking some more and. Like, even, like, a little bit of rocks fall. And we're talking, like, this is one of those scenes where everything is dead silent. And just the tiniest crumble of rock sounds, like, really fucking loud. Yeah. That's what that's what we're dealing with. And it crumbles, and they stop, and they look down. Nothing. Still Not a away. single movement. Yep. So they keep going. And probably one of my favorite funniest moments is you see both of them, like, sneaking, like, where you see, like, the thing behind them, and you just see both of their faces wide-eyed, just, like... Kind of sneak, sneak, sneak. The zombie moves and ups its head, and they both like just stand there, not even looking at each other, and then they just bolt. Yeah, they start running for their lives once again. I'm like, um, okay, that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> also, this one finally hear like see and hear it's like skin all bubbling, gross, like with the weird nice. Ugh, like, yeah, yeah. It awakes. They give chase. They fling it like flinging rocks at them with how fast it's going, and they just finally a uh, spirit is actually hit a couple times by the massive rocks that are like. Okay, yeah. Them. Real talk though, mm-hmm. that man's got. a... Thick ass skull. If oh, you yeah. can get pummeled by a that giant ass rock with and <laughs> not resilience. and not get phased. Yep, they eventually escape through a very ne- narrow crevice uh, as the zombie again gets stuck. Right, that was that part because then they see like these these like cra- uh, craters or something filled with mm-hmm. 
Well, they don't know what it is, but we know it's lava. Yeah, they're on the mantle of a volcano. They're like still yep. solidified mantle. Um, the giant thing begins to thrash and flail its head back and forth as they kind of just like walk, turn around and see like, what the fuck is that thing up with? <laughs> well, yeah, it's even funnier because they're like, okay, they like Fang and uh, Spear start walking on and they notice, you know, one of the little like yeah. crater things just spews out uh, lava yeah, and they're just they're like, like oh, oh shit. shit. And they notice and Spear notices. Yeah, when it was, Fang... was kind of yellow though. So I thought it was either like acid or like sulfur. I assume it's probably just like, yeah, the sulfuric gas or whatever. It might, yeah, it, it might have been, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're right, it could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, uh, Spear notices every time Fang takes a step, the ground starts cracking. Yeah. And so they both are like, okay, we're going back because it's stuck and we're not going to get hurt by it. And they turn around, they start walking back the way they came. And then the zombie breaks free and starts chasing them. <laughs> it doesn't just break through. It kind of rips its own, like, sides off, squeezing through the yeah, hole. Yeah, seriously. And now its entire rib cage is exposed as it, spri- it goes, breaks through the crevice and starts stomping after them over the mantle. Of course, it's fucking enormous size. It's breaking oh. the mantle. And then the, <laughs> and then the real chase begins because now they can't be gentle with the cracking of the ground. So they start running the opposite direction of this thing, barreling towards them. This thing... Every single step it does. So many cracks and stuff. Even at one point, it gets hit by one of those uh, geysers. Yeah. And it's like, it burns a little bit, and then it just keeps fucking going. Yeah, it's still not dead. It's resilient as hell. It's like, its Even, skin turns completely red at this point. Well, it's like well it, almost, because yeah. it starts stomping around, and it actually makes a hole so that it falls into this sulfur, magma, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Spear and Fang are like, oh... It's dead. It comes out and it's burning the entire body on fire, completely red at this point, and it just keeps coming. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, even Nemesis from Resident Evil Three <laughs> wasn't this fucking persistent. I'm gonna say not really gonna reference Wesker from Five when he fell when he got punched by that rock in the lava. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boulder punching asshole, yeah. Chris Redfield. <laughs> no, no, not Chris Bow. He Red doesn't Red punch boulders. <laughs> I could have wanted yeah, to. Could've Actually, no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> but <laughs> like, yeah, we see the the they kind of like use the body of the um, giant the dinosaur as a like bridge to escape. Finally, as they are like completely seeing it flailing and getting engulfed in fire. Uh, as it finally fucking dies. <laughs> yes, it finally actually is. We don't get to see the eyes transform back, but we just see this fucking thing just finally burn. Yeah, it burns it as we see like ashes falling and we see like Spear kind of looking back with compassion. Like, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with that thing, but whatever it was, it was terrible. Yeah, the, the acid just like took out the entirety of the of the diseased skin, so now you just see his raw muscle. Yeah, completely just yep. skeletal eventually. Just, done. yeah, finally. Finally, they get a moment to be like, "Okay, cool. We don't have to worry about a zombie dinosaur." Yeah, but he's but yeah, Spear definitely feels a little bit bad for it, and that is the end of the episode. Holy fuck! Just like going from "Let's heal my friend" to "Fucking zombie dinosaur." <laughs> I I want to say they they're jumping the shark a little bit. Oh no! But for this show, that's kind of par. I mean, in the la- in the last uh, batch of episodes. We saw those giant bat things. And the giant spider. Yeah, and a giant spider. <laughs> yeah, both like weird supernatural beings. So I'm like, you know what? Zombie dinosaur, that's pretty much But also, far. besides that, what about the fucking black goo that turned the fucking ape men into hulks? <laughs> Fair. Oh, that, g- yeah. Yeah, yeah stuff that like, literally, they, they drink it in moderation. Spears is like, I can drink all of this. Yeah, go, 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 go. And then, um, but also, yeah, like, that's this is the third crazy supernatural episode another fun horror episode uh this episode like i said aired out of order once the show was on hiatus but the reason that was was because this episode aired around i want to say late march of 2020 (laughs) just at the beginning of the pandemic they said you know what we have this episode in the bag what do you guys say we release it early? <laughs> Before oh. the series comes back. And Gendy oh, just looks no. and goes like that. I, I just imagine Gendy's just sitting here, like, you know, stroking his beard if he has one. Or just stroking <laughs> his, so, chin. Yeah, his chin. And he just sits there and he's like, do it. Yeah. No, <laughs> seriously. Like, do it. This will, this will be funny. Yeah. It, yeah. The, this episode, like I said, after the eight men, we didn't know what was going on with Fang, if she was dead or not. And then 
like a couple of months early, this episode airs, Fang's perfectly fine, nobody knows what happened, it's like, okay, I guess there's no continuity in this show, Fang's fine, now they're going on another adventure with this crazy zombie, and then the show came back and it aired proper, in proper order, and it, like, it made sense to everyone watching, but like, yeah, this episode aired early, and also this one, it got like a ton of Emmys. This episode specifically, really? Yeah. It was, this, they got, oh, this a was lot the first one nominated. Yeah, this one was the first one nominated for uh, any Emmys for the whole series, and this really? one won a lot. Yeah, huh. it won a couple. It's an okay. incredible episode. <laughs> but real talk, because you said when this got released, yeah, ain't that just the way this episode aired at the beginning of the pandemic? Resident Evil Three remake came out during the pandemic. <laughs> of course, yeah. And yeah. Have, if you've seen the opening of that, it's just like, wait. This, this isn't talking about COVID, is it? <laughs> nope, it's talking about something it's different. just a coincidence how plagues have been in our society forever. Yeah, yeah. just like, Even in dinosaur shit. times. <laughs> just the yeah. timing is impeccable, and I love it. Yeah, apparently tuberculosis is still, like, like a huge thing. Of course, yeah. That, Wait, really? Yeah, like, like, uh, like, well, particularly in, like, non-rich countries. Of course, yeah. Like, like, it's, yeah. it's apparent, like, like, I've been following, um, like, Vlogbrothers, and, like, uh, John in particular will talk a lot about it. How like tuberculosis is still like it's a very curable disease, but it's but like like lower uh you know, you know um lower uh, less rich countries yeah, uh, countries tip, uh, like often just do not have access to the medicine that would cure it, and so it's just like a it's just running rampant over there. Yeah. And, huh. and it's all thanks to Johnson and Johnson and their fucking patents. Of course, yeah. They're... Anyway, <laughs> wow, I, like I, I actually really, had yeah. no clue about that. Yeah, fuck That's you, Johnson. Ridiculous. Johnson. Yeah, like corporations and medications, all kinds of awful. The, the whole thing's terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but also, yeah, this episode, uh, I love the supernatural aspect of this episode. The fact that it was a weird zombie. Uh, whether the plague was magical in nature or normal, because, like, the weird ice roll thing made me believe it's something, like, actually supernatural and not just, like, a weird T-virus scientific explanation for this crazy shit happening. <laughs> but also, I love, like, the just, like, everything from the vomiting. This is another thing, like the Ape Man fight, I've seen, like, clips of before I saw the series. Mm. I saw, like, the videos of a gigantic zombie sauropod fucking smashing up eggs and killing everything in its sight. I'm like, what the fuck is this show? <laughs> this looks insane. I what, can the, what the hell? <laughs> I can imagine the, like, Emmy board seeing that fucking episode and, like, not knowing what the fuck this show is about and just, like, trying to, <laughs> to decipher, like, okay, is it kind of supernatural prehistoric show? Yeah, you watching this and it'd be like, wait, 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 wait. Uh, wait, I thought this was a show about dinosaurs. It is. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and it is. But speaking of Supernatural... Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, uh, speaking of, yeah, plagues and all that kind of shit, uh, you two have played the Resident Evil games. Have you played the remakes yet? I've, I've, wa I've yeah. watched people play yes. the remakes. I'm starting... Finally, to play two remake, but I'm more when it comes to Resident Evil, I was more of a watcher than a player. I played through all of two. Of, I think I started in like a little less than halfway through three. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, remake. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say, um, what's your favorite like uh, Resident Evil big monster enemies that you've seen? Uh oh, what? Like we're talking like boxes or like? Yeah, like, well, I, bosses or regular reappearing animals. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. So for me personally. Um, I would have to say it's tied between, ooh, sorry about that, I had to crack mm. my neck. Um, I would have to say it is tied between, um, one of them is my favorite because I just like the design, and one of them is my favorite because it scares the fuck out of me. Mm. So the one that's just like, I like the design of them, surprisingly enough, are the liquors. I no. li like, in, in video games, like, The Last of Us with the clickers. Yeah. I, I, it always adds an air of tension oh, yeah. to, uh, to have <laughs> blind enemies at all. No. So, you know, you, you, you walk through and just the design of the, uh, liquor, it's creepy, it's grotesque, and I love it. Oh, yeah. Now, the one that I like because it scares the fucking shit out of me every single time, and the remake did a fantastic job of this. Motherfucking regenerators from four. Oh god! I like, oh, like okay. So um, I know you guys. The have remake probably, of four. Have you seen them in the remake of four? Yeah, I have. They I said that's why I said yeah. that's why I said they Fucking did a good job. But, like first time I ever saw a regenerator. I probably have mentioned this to you guys before. But one of my first experiences with Resident Evil Four was watching my friend play it. Like it was like back in like high school or something or maybe early middle school because I forget when they originally came out, and my friend like one of my friends from school was one of the ones who had a little bit of a higher income family, mm -hmm. so they had surround sound, like the early age of surround Ooh. sound, and they would play Resident Evil Four with the surround sound, and the volume would be up just a little bit higher than it should, so imagine me 
uh, watching my friend go through the lab, and I hear that <laughs> fucking breathing coming from behind me. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> that's, and, and then I keep, and no matter what, it's not even because of that. Like, it's not like a trigger from my past or anything. Because I've gotten over, like, all that. And I would still hear that fucking breathing, and the hairs on the back of my neck would still stand up, and I'd be like, I know what that is. Man, they must have had, like, a really nice receiver or something. Because, like, I mean, that shit, like, back in the day, because, by the way, it was 2005 when that game came out. Thank you, yeah. So, yeah, 2000, so so 2005, and I think it was on the GameCube originally, and, or even on the PS2, like, at that time, HDMI wasn't really a thing. That, like, that, that shit was being ported over in, like, like dual channel audio and that's it to get surround sound you have to get like a pretty decent receiver that could split it out into the various channels and i have a friend who has one of those and like you know he tells me that like that shit is just black magic the way that it can like take signals like that and just like split it into the correct proper channels depending on like what the sound is or like the various frequencies in damn near real time right that is just bonkers and that that sounds like you probably what he had yeah and again i don't know how they got like i said all I, the only way I'm gonna say it is that they were just a, li- uh, a little bit higher income, and by that I'm being sarcastic and saying they were a little bit higher up on that. But okay. just yeah, it was fucking because you know, like you like you said, it was early days, and there really wasn't surround sound because there was no HDMI. But somehow they had one that did that, and it's just like that's kind of nuts. Though mm. that, 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 they were able to produce that. But I have talked for a long time. It's your turn to answer his question. What's the question? Favorite Resident Evil, like either a big monster or, like or zombie creature. creature. Yeah. Uh oh boy. Um, I did, I did sort of play RE4 recently. Um, so it's probably gonna be something. Oh from yeah, that. that's but honestly, right. Like nothing. Nothing really in particular stands out, except maybe the hunters. Like I, I the hunters are like like hunter um, alphas mm. from like RE one. Like those that like those guys are are like fucking creepy. Well, not creepy. But, like those things are are threatening, super threatening. Like, they they will they will fuck your ship if you're not careful. Yeah, if, if I remember correctly, can't they just like one shot you? Mm, I think if they use the right attack, yeah, they could just yeah. like, they could just like, like jump at you and like slice your head off, and yeah. just clean off, oh, yeah. yeah, something like that. It's kind of like the freaking Salvador with the the chainsaw. But there is another thing yeah. in the RE three remake specifically, mm-hmm. the fucking spider things. I think they're called like the demos or something like that. No, the one the uh, the ones in that one part with the electric like field. That you're yeah, the, or the ones that like literally inject Jill immediately. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That just grossed me the fuck was, out. Yeah, oh, the I think it's oh, the, oh, the Drain Deimos, yeah. Yes, yeah, thank the you. Demos, the yeah. Deimos, thank you, yeah. Just, that alone just gets an honorable mention because oh, yeah, they are disgusting. fucking disgusting and they're spider-like and I... Yeah, that was fucking What about you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say Jan from 2, I fucking love. Or from 1. 1, from one, 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 yeah. one, yeah. And then Neptune was in... 1. 1 also, yeah, that was yeah. the underground the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah Jan I love because I just love giant snakes are cool as shit, but also it was, like, again, another fucking mutant monster that I fucking yeah. love the aesthetic of. But then also, yeah. You what? have to play Yanti, uh, Yanti Purebloods then in D&D. Oh, no, they're too... I've, I've thought about they're it. They're serpents! Yeah, but only like a real manga I'd love to play as. But anyway, besides anyway, that, yeah. yeah, D&D. But no, I love... Uh, yeah, the fucking zombie monsters in all the games are fun as hell. I can't remember what the uh, mammoth one is called. The uh, elephant one in um, uh, Outbreak. I reckon... What's the one? In Outbreak, is the one with the, with the people in the city? Uh, probably? Yeah. Or is there was like rac- a giant elephant at well, one point. It's one of those things, too. Uh, that, it was probably Outbreak. So that's one of the few titles I never played, and that... It's and not I, good. And that, and, that, and that particular enemy description is not familiar to me. Yeah, no, you don't need to bother with it. It's a not good game. Yeah. Well, right, either way, but yeah. But yeah, um, that was fun supernatural craziness. Uh, but speaking of which, of course, we need to get to this next insane episode of the series. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Speaking of uh, supernatural things... Episode, episode 8... eight. Coven, Coven of, of the, the Damned. Damned. Stand ready. Yeah, another horror episode for the series. Uh, Actually, yeah. only for like the first ten minutes, but then it gets in a very sympathetic episode. But um, yeah, it start, it's pretty much a horror. Well, yeah, uh, it opens one. up at night as we see Spear walking through the forest with Fang. They're on a nice, peaceful thing, but then they see a big, gigantic, glowing green light in the distance. Yeah, and then they start heading towards that, and we see a kind of muscular, like, Viking ass looking guy with oh, like before, a big they do, old beard. They do, um, Spear climbs a tree to try to look and see what the fuck it is, and they pass another big giant stone. Oh, yeah, with runes. like a rune on it. Yep, and we see, uh, that we, he goes closer and we see several weird horned, grass robed figures. 
and they are around a large screaming redhead man. <laughs> yeah, a large screaming redhead vi- Viking man who's got like shit, like these bright green like yeah, runes and stuff painted, painted all, all over, over his body. under a green fire. Yeah, the figures are all witch like things, and they're tossing magic spells or something at the fire, then vocalizing weirdly, just like... And then... (laughs) Son of a bitch! Hey, hey, hey. Two more times and you'll summon him. I know. We just got rid of him. (laughs) I know, my throat's already going out. Oh, but anyway. um, And then as they're doing this chanting and this uh, tossing of magic or whatever, Mm -hmm. we see a giant... Would it be a pterosaur? Would it be a pterodactyl? Uh, Pterosaur is a term for any flying... Would it be pterodon? It'd be a pterosaur because that's the term for any flying... Yeah, a giant... It looks like a pterodactyl, but it's way too big. But yeah, knows? but it's like this giant pterodon of some sort. Just fly, uh, sorry, pterosaur. Yeah. Just flies over, lands down, and you see this. Also, very, it has big, giant, glowing green eyes. Yes, so, so. giant, glowing green eyes as well. That's important. Yeah. And we just see this tall, thin witch, witch-like thing, literally ethereally, like floating down. And this thing, like when you look at it, because. With character designs that Gendy does, you know, if they're just not talking, you can see, like, their lips are close or whatever. This thing, it walks around, and you see literally no mouth on this thing. It has no mouth whatsoever. Green, glowing eyes, tall, menacing, big ol' horns. Yeah, weird, very distinct-looking shape. And once once this one comes through, all of them start going crazy with the chanting. Yep, it begins to approach the man as we see one sad witch with no horns on her head, kind of looking depressed. And I don't. They don't, of course, they don't say it at any point in the show. But her name is Lula, and this is the Luma? main witch. Lula. Oh, Lula. Okay. Yep, she is the main witch of this arc. But yes, we see that they are worshiping this weird, mouthless witch figure that comes down from the cliff. Uh, but then it turns into a large, horned, black silhouette figure with weird, magical green trimming. Where have we seen that design in Gendy Tartakovsky before? Hmm. I don't actually know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna sorry, say, I sneezed. Don't be a foolish samurai <laughs> Extra warrior. Thick. <laughs> Extra. Oh my god. Well, I mean, he didn't. I would have say... green trimmings. No, he did have a green mouth or he had green face. Yeah, 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 face. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but, hey um, yes. at least he wasn't a little girl wearing a red hood and <laughs> great flaming eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anyway, um, I can't think Aku without saying that. Yeah. Anyway, but of course, she looks at the man and we see a weird green snake-like thing come out of her mouth and go into the man's. Or like what? Sorry. She like um, the room starts rolling around the man, and they start like forming into his stomach and they kind of come out of his mouth is the form of a giant snake. And it kind of drains him of all of his energy. And yeah, we're talking like yeah, we're talking like, like yeah. um, if you've seen Indiana Jones: The Last Crusade, when the guy drinks from the wrong goblet, yeah, like he ages super quickly. He turns like very decrepit. His head falls out. He's pretty much skin and bone, literally. Yeah, it kills him, and his head rolls off. Um, as Spear and Fan kind of look on, like, what the fuck is going on now? We just skipped a zombie. Now we got witches. Oh God, <laughs> the snake. Uh, begins to return to the woman as she makes a weird fucking, like, I, I wrote Coco Pelli, if you know the figure, you know that what that is. Uh, she makes a weird Coco Pelli pose as the thing turns into a weird circle in her stomach, as she kind of looks like she's pregnant now, the weird black 2D silhouette that she is. <laughs> First there was zombies, and now there are witches. What is this, Left for Dead? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, what's next, um, fucking, um... Uh, RE8. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but then fight vampires only, already. The, the crazy man bats. <laughs> but, not, but not only that, but the thing inside this beast's belly starts to take form, and it literally just reaches in, pulls it out, and baby! Yeah, it made baby. Uh, the chanting witches begin to now start begging and pleading to her as she kind of looks over at them, and one who has a baby, little baby blanket, she's like, okay, you get the baby, and she gives the baby to this woman. Yeah, and then the lady is just like, baby. Yeah. And I'm just like, literally, my first thought when I see this is, wait, 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 so this is a baby-making cult? <laughs> yeah. Gone wrong? Yeah, or oh, gone right. no. <laughs> they get rid of the men immediately, so it's gone right, I guess. I, right. I hate that you put that out there, man. I'm just going to say Another thing now. in the universe. <laughs> yes. Um, however... This is not where this coven thing, like, baby-making cult ends. Because the pterodactyl flinches, and you see inside his eye, you see, like, its vision. Yeah, telescoping it's vision like, onto Spear and Fang staring at the Yeah, and bushes. it just looks around, and it sees Spear and Fang, and then it yells. The big old like, whatever the mouthless witch thing mm-hmm. was, just turns around, does the exact same thing, sees the two, 
And then, like, the top part of her head becomes normal as apparently she gets a mouth now because yep. she screams. And all the witches are just like, uh-uh, uh-uh, fuck you. Yep, and they begin to chase them. And we we get yeah, a jump scare as the pair begins to, like, fling through the forest. As all these random witches are, like, flying at them and jumping at them. But whenever a spear tries to hit them with his spear, they disappear. And you know, I, I, I honestly thought it was the same, like, mouthless witch. That was just trying to jump no, it's, out. It's, it was like, the, it's, the, it's the various uh, the other witches like. Oh okay, yeah, it was the various witches. And yeah, like 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 Matt said, like every time he swings and hits them, they just poof into magic runes. Yep, as they continue to try to grab him, uh, they freak out. Spear or, uh, Spear gets uh, chased by a bunch of them, and uh, Fang gets separated from him. Uh, eventually, we do see the hornless witch, the little uh, Lula, the little sad one. Uh, she does end up immediately catching Fang and taking control of her mind as her eyes yep. begin to close. Uh, well, it, it's not called hold the uh, hold monster. It's like what? It's control. control. Yeah, control animal yeah, or whatever. Con- yeah, control Command beast. animal or control beast. Yeah. Yeah, control beast. Yep, we see uh, she. Then we see like the she gives chase, and then when Fang sees or when Spear sees Fang, he's just like, "Oh, hey, you're here!" And she knocks Spear out. And then he wakes up. Yep. The next morning, we see he is tied up the exact same as the red-headed man. On the stones. Yep. And um, as he's sitting there, he hears heavy footsteps. He sees Fang with Lula. Yep. Uh, as as we're just going to keep calling her that. Yep. She's riding on uh, Fang's back as they with, see Spear. What, what, what does a Fang have? A Fang? I don't know. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, yeah. The green glowing green, eyes. The green glowing eyes. Um, and then, of course... Spear starts yelling for, like, in desperation for Fang, and Fang, like, her her eyes go from that green to normal, and she starts shaking her head, like, runes, like, flying yeah, around, like, like she's flying trying around to, fi- like, she's starting to succeed on her wisdom saves. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I have in my notes, like, like, Fang gets possessed, Spear breaks the magic by yelling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and they overcome witchcraft. Um, however... Um, Lula does not like this, and she decides to cast the level 9 spell, Stop. Yep, time stop across the entire area, freezing both Fang and Spear in place as they are like, screaming to each other. And she's just looking at, the, she's looking at both of them like, what the fuck is going on? He screams and she breaks my spell? Yeah, she's actually Hold on a second. Like, Draws a circle on the ground, picks it up like it's like a, like a hole, like a cartoon like, yeah, hole. Like a, yeah, like a, a Wily Coyote... <laughs> right, puts it hole. in. Yeah. yeah, puts it in front of Fang, and then leaps in. And then we find out that when she leaps in, she sees Fang with her babies hatching from all the way back in like episode before one. episode one. Yeah, before were, episode before one. Born. Oh, I see. Uh, I think this Chris said it best. <laughs> it was like it was like her jumping in and looking at memories or or time traveling or something. Yeah, yeah I thought it was time traveling at first, but yeah, oh, right. I, yeah. Okay, it's I, likely more. It's more likely just looking at memories. Yeah, yeah. and I wrote in my notes: is this a clip show episode? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, she looks and she sees the babies and thing being a good mom. And she just smiles. Yeah, she fast forwards time a little bit to see them, uh, you know, hunting and enjoying the company. Uh, and then it cuts to the night that they were attacked by the Rex Pack. Yep. Well, first by uh by Spear. Oh yeah, Spear and comes in. And then Spear in. like just uh, and then we see like one of the Rexes mm-hmm. appear, and you know Spear they stabs kill it. it. Yes, kills it like right. And then he's just you know upset. Babies go to nurture, like, oh, you know, you are friend. And then the alpha comes in and just eats them yeah, whole. Yeah, chomps them up in that exact same scene again. She's yeah, like, we oh just, my god. Yeah, we get to relive that, only Lula's sitting there like, oh, fucking hell. Yep. She jumps out, and the first thing she does, the very most sensible thing to do, hugs uh, hugs the fang. Yep, hugs fang, just then, like, she obviously sympathizes with her. Yep, and then she, like, looks at Spear, and, like, walks over, like... Hmm. Okay, I saw her, and then draws another circle, draws another, what'd you call it, portable hole? The yeah. portable hole. Yeah, yep. draws another portable hole and says, your turn. Jumps in, and you see she's at a cave. And then she walks into the cave and hears a woman screaming in pain, and then you hear a tiny voice screaming. Yep. Someone gave birth, and thus you see Spear walking up with tiny baby, and like lifts it up like you are now Ufasa, in this world. Yeah. <laughs> like no, so then, yeah. Yeah, And then the, the and, you know the baby just like <laughs> feels the sunlight and is like wow wow smile son. And Lula's just like oh my god this is adorable. Let's fast forward to immediately the family getting eaten. Yep, getting eaten once again by that same Alpha Rex pack. And, and like, she is like really like oh fuck jumps out and it jumps out 
reapplies the magic to Fang, returns time, jumps on Fang, and just looks at Spear. And you can tell, like, this, Big this giant is why, sad eyes of yeah, sympathy. You can, you, you can see, like, this is where Gendy does a really good job with this show, because, again, no words have ever been spoken in this entire series. And, you know, Spear at first is, like, really pissed off at her, but she just has the saddest face ever. Yep. And even Spear is just like, what, huh? What, wait, why do you look so sad? Yep. And she just walks away with Fang. Yep, we see that she goes to her hut as she pulls a cloth aside and we see a small caveman like drawing on her with another little kid. And this is when she does the memory spell once again and we go into her memories. We see another ritual like the one where they drain that guy and the weird witch goddess they prayed to gave her the baby. Uh, we see her being incredibly protective and roaring at the other witches when they get close to her so she the baby's only hers. We fast forward a little bit in time as we see the young girl that the baby has now grown into kind of playing around in a big giant field of flowers, chasing a red butterfly along with this main... With a lot Lula. of red butterflies, yeah. mind you. Chasing it with Lula the witch as we see, um, you know, future Lula, like looking at the memory of herself as the kid runs off. We see the memory one run up to her like, hey, wait, pay attention, your kid's running away, pay attention, trying to get her own attention in the, in the memory. And then we hear a scream. Yep. Little child scream. screams. Yep, we go and we follow... Lula in the memory over to the cliff and she sees that her child has fallen off of a cliff and died. Oh. Again, red butterflies around her. Yep, as we see the red button, we see her kind of just like screaming in pain and anger as the memory Lula jumps out and she kind of just like bemoans everything that happened. Um, she also like lifts up a rug and yeah. she sees you see like a cloth which is either like part of the dress or like the baby cloth that she had for her daughter and just like, puts it over her face like in mourning kind of thing. And then another little witch thing without horns just opens up opens up her door with like a weird little bowl and just grunts. Uh, yeah, a bowl of the green magic paint that they use for that other man. She's like, hey, you, you gotta do the thing. Hey, get yo, yo, yo. You, yeah. Hey, hey, Julie, do the thing. Yeah, of course. With uh, the, the red butterf butterflies persist, uh, present in Fang's and Spears' memories? No. No. They no were Spears. only in the memory of her daughter. Okay. Yep, and I'm not sure what the red butterfly sig signify. It's just what the daughter was chasing and what the daughter was around the daughter when she died. So oh, okay. just remember, it's just like symbolizing the, the daughter's soul for her, pretty okay. much. Uh, we see her take the paint and still riding the mind-controlled fang, goes over to Spear as he's like resistant, trying to get away from the paint, and she's just like, hey, you know, I gotta fucking do this, or you're gonna yep. die. And she starts, and she starts, uh, or you're gonna die. Yeah, or you're gonna die. Or you're gonna die. <laughs> That's something like a Ludo thing we see, to say. Of course, yeah. Uh, we see, like, she looks behind her, and we see a couple of other the, uh, the other witches with babies, and they kind of look at her and, like, roar at her, because they're like, yo, you're a, fuck, you're a fuck up, and, you know, killed your kid or whatever, so they're, like, shitty to her. And she's, like, continues to be very upset. Yep, and but and then, of course, she keeps drawing. She, and as she's drawing on the she face... She does, uh, like, pacify Spear with a spell, making him calm, and begins to paint the runes on him anyway. Yep, and just keeps pa uh, painting. And the moment she starts finishing the face, we see a red butterfly on his shoulder, and that just kind of, like... Like her head, you know, because we just saw that there were red butterflies in her dog in the backstory with her daughter. So she just sees that, and it like kind of flies over to her, and then flies away, and she's just like instantly like sad, leaves, and then we go back to the next night where all yep. the witches are like ooga booga ooga booga, yeah. or sorry sorry ekum bokum ekum bokum. <laughs> As they're all once again praying to the witch, and we see the all witch praying just for a kid. starts starts walking down, you know, uh, getting ready to hold up her uh, her staff to become the big thing again. Yeah, she's gonna do like a weird, before, like, wiggly, wavy thing. But we see, but before, Lula, yeah, as she's as she's walking down, before we get to see her transform, we see Lula with Spears' spear, kind of climbing up the cave or climbing up the uh, plateau behind her. And uh, so, you know, we get the, the staff yeah, picked she, up, yeah, the she transformation. Her, she transforms into the crazy 2D form again. But and then the pterodactyl we, makes a weird, like, screaming sound. Yep, we see that the pterodactyl has been speared by the witch, and it falls to the ground dead. And Lula is pissed. Yep, and we see that the main witch stops the ritual suddenly. Uh, at this point, <coughs> Fang bursts in and knocks Spear loose from the giant thing he's in. As like witch starts like screaming at them, just like in a crazy evil monster yep. face. <laughs> Lula Lula controls uh, Fang to free Spear pretty much, yep. and then she uses Wild Shape to turn into a dire raven. Yep, as the main witch turns into a massive wolf. Um, we see that she's kind of distracting them while Spear and Fang escape, and the witch like just stays back, turns back into a human. 
and she or whatever the fuck. They she, are. Got, she got she got <laughs> she got wounded. Yeah, and she like or the, yeah, lo- the, and she lost her concentration pretty much and became human again. Yeah. And then all we see because we we notice before it goes back to the witch fight, uh, it goes to Fang's eye being completely green. Yeah, as and as then it goes the to the fight where um, Lula got hurt. Turns back the human, and all you see is the giant wolf snarling, and Lula just kind of closes her eyes, and all you see is the mouth go over the head, yep, and then it cuts right back to Fang's eye, dissipating and turning back to normal. Yep, as we continue to see them escaping into the forest, having left this weird witch cult in the past. Yep. And then we have one final shot, oops, sorry for knocking your laptop, of the, we see the witch Lula again in the forest of flowers, reunited with her daughter, and presumably some sort of afterlife. Uh, and, and that that's is where the end of the episode. Yep. Yeah, now this was an incredibly crazy episode because it introduced tons of weird, insane magic. Yeah. The weird fucking witch and the cult. <clears throat> Um, I love the whole weird ritual of the the witch master, and it was just a fucking fun ass episode. Yeah, and what once again just a master class uh, in Den- in Danny Tartakovsky's ability to uh, to just do environmental storytelling with no dialogue whatsoever. Absolutely, yeah. like this is not the favorite one of this group, but goddamn, is this a good episode? Oh, yeah. and, you know, it starts off, like we said earlier, it starts off like a horror because, you know, weird supernatural coven of witches with the, sorry, Chris, I'm going to ruin it again for you, baby making cults. <laughs> <laughs> but then later on you find out, because one of them's still very, like, sad about everything, but then you find she starts actually, like, questioning things, sees things, sympathizing with our heroes, and then actually turns around and saves the day. I'm just like, you know what? I like this. Yeah, it's fucking really, really cool. It is. Um, this also, the crazy magic and different aspects of it and everything like that, once again reminds me of, like I said earlier, the um, the idea of a prehistoric tabletop or like either Pathfinder or um, D&D game set in this kind of like time period with this kind of level of technology would be incredibly fantastic. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will introduce the whole like druid or witch class, but then like spirits of barbarian ass coolness. It's so fucking awesome. But yeah, I love the aesthetic of it. And um, I was going to have you two vamp while I run to the bathroom again. If you were to have any kind of tabletop game in this kind of period, what kind of classes would you think of and what kind of, what kind of aspects would you like? Because these witches could be easily like a warlock thing or even a fucking, like, given the, whatever the form of what she turned into. But uh, what would you guys do if you guys had like a prehistoric... Like if we were actually doing a tabletop D&D game? Kind of yeah. thing? Like, like, like any tabletop uh, set? Any type, uh, yeah, any type. What would you like? like what build would you think D&D of? And all that stuff. In this kind of like mixed okay. uh, mixed time period, like both okay. prehistoric and caveman and like all kinds of crazy technology we're going to okay. see in the future. Mm-hmm. I'll start with, we'll start with you, Chris. What do you uh, think? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, do you, would you like me we're to go then while you think? Well, no, okay, okay. So if... Yeah. Okay. So if we're if we're thinking D and D, I mean, because that that's just kind of the system that always comes to my mind, right? Which, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Okay. So D and D has has t- typically been set in like a period where you know obviously magic exists, right? But but technology has not really advanced to the point like where it is right now. Like like electronics are not really a thing. Yeah, because uh, like in D and D, like they've gone from like fantasy to. I think they're reaching because of Artificer, maybe like a steampunk kind of thing, but yeah. it's never like modern technology. Right, it's like, it like, like kind of straddles the line between like high fantasy and steampunk. Yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, it's like some some level of technology, but but not really like advanced to be remotely similar to to, to real life. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, and you know, with in this time period especially, like, you know, that kind of technology just does not exist anymore. Like, like metal has probably like barely been discovered at all. I, I mean, like you you have you know you got spear with his actual spear, uh, you know, uh, crafted from a rock with whatever crude crude tools he has available to him, which is probably not very much. But yeah, like metal's metal's not really like uh, like like whetstones or uh, or that kind of thing is probably just not even really a thing. So you you, you got rocks that are, that are shaping other rocks. So you've got so you're only able to make you know crude tools. Anyway, um, but so but since this universe has introduced that that concept of magic, you know, magic can just be a thing, and it it seems like it can just kind of be. Whatever the the director kind of need, needs it to be, so fair. Uh, so you, I mean, so yeah, you you could have druid. Um, you could probably have sorcerer. Probably not. Well, maybe wizard. Uh, that would probably involve like a knowledge of of like writing and, yes. and mm. written written language. Yeah, and like the only writing we have seen in this is literally just drawing. So yeah, I mean, you're probably right. Um, but yeah, but what kind of character would you kind of make? 
Oh boy. I mean, I I am partial to to magic just because like uh, because of the variety of things you can do with it, and also range is just kind of nice to have. Like barbarians and melee is kind of nice for you know me me hit big with big numbers and stuff like that. Like that, I, there's a there's certainly a level of like adrenaline and dopamine uh, in that regard. Uh, but but uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't All know. Right. I, I I guess I probably just uh, I probably just go with you know sorcerer because I just I like being able to choose spells and not and, and not have to to think about like which spell uh, loadout am I gonna take today. <laughs> yeah, and, and in yep. this ca- and in this kind of world, I mean, sorcerers could be a thing because all a sorcerer is is someone who was born with magic yeah. capabilities. And in this case, that could be a thing, like 100%. with these covenant witches or something. Um, yeah, and, you know, I agree with you because, you know, I, 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 I'm i more of like a, I can class as different other things. I've played m- many different classes. So, like, the sorcerer thing that you said, that you said, yeah. definitely a fun choice, especially, you know, it's, it's magic. You were born with the magic. You can choose whatever spells you want and just be like, I didn't have to learn shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Sorcerer but, like but you also are stuff. far away. Yeah. The or, only things you'd have to worry about case, is... Or the case of, like, that one, um... <laughs> Uh, that that one like a gorilla episode with the black goo. It's like you maybe you don't even have to be born with magic. You you could just like ingest really strange substances to give you magical powers. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. just buff yourself up with oh. weird fucking crazy magic. There you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. Me personally, because I've you know I've kind of dabbled with this idea at least. I've never done anything with it, but in a prehistoric kind of thing, I think honestly the best thing that we could do because. This is the start of, like, civilization because, you know, we're starting off small, obviously, because we have cro man man. But, you know, civilization is probably going to be a thing. I don't know. And, um, you know, so, ha- like, it, like we saw with this episode right here, they obviously had a certain religion going on mm-hmm. for them. So, honestly, well, it's not even the religion aspect, but everything's all natural. It's very paganistic, this, uh, this weird yeah. uh, cult thing. So personally, I would say, like, if we were going to ever make, like, a campaign that took place in, like, prehistoric kind of time or whatever this time era is, I would probably make a druid. Yeah. I'm used to playing druids. Obviously, it would be, like, of nature or something like that. But, you know, just have it, just having, like, you know, nature magic and everything like that, being able to grow, like, grow vines or anything like that, seems to, in my mind, make sense, especially with the pseudo-supernatural way of primal. As it is. Yeah. I was going to say, like, uh, that. I mean, as far as, like, martial and, like, melee-focused characters, there probably wouldn't be much besides Barbarian, at least based on what we've seen with... Uh, oh, Ranger. With, 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 um, Fighter, Ranger. Sorry, what we've seen with Spear. But as we'll see in, in uh, what was it, the, the episode after this one? Uh, you got, uh, well, uh, nine or ten, maybe. So, oh, sorry, uh, uh, in a, as we'll see later in episode ten, uh, there actually could be... There could realistically be, like, more, more like, um... High, the higher thinking, like human levels of like thought and and um, uh, and like planning uh, to to create like the different forms of like actual like I don't know what the I don't know what the word is for it just like fighter it, ranger yeah just just yeah just different types of, of Melee, just yeah. different kinds of martial arts oh okay uh, yeah uh, uh, like just like you know, high, higher planes of thinking yeah uh, right. of, of like cognitive intellect you know yeah absolutely you know that makes sense and we've kind of seen something not to an extreme obviously because. Um, what were the, uh, the monkey people that were hiding from the bats? What kind of people oh, were they? Oh, they were Homo erectus. Yeah, yeah, Homo erectus, yeah. where, you know, cro was after Homo erectus. Yeah. You know, we've seen the differences in evolutionary traits already in this, but, like you said, if we can see maybe, like, the next step in that or something like that, there's, yeah. there might be possibility of, uh, of, growing up, of, like, making, you know, different kind of martial kind of fighting classes and stuff like that. Yeah, I would say that those, uh, the ape men, the Australopithecus in uh, Rage of the Ape Men or whatever, would be probably more fighter class than a barbarian, I would say. Mm-hmm. Given the way that they were unless, unless they drink the goo and that's yeah, what that, well, them. I would say Korg by himself is a barbarian, but the other ones who were just, like, realistically normally fighting, and then the shaman, there was a shaman with the boss of them who made the black goo. Or had the black goo in any way, maybe not made it, but we'll get into that. But now, he and I have been talking to we're blue in the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, what class would you be thinking oh, of in fucking, this? Oh, uh, fucking mounted, uh, probably mounted fighter like him with the, with the fucking T-Rex. Like one. a That's cavalier like, almost? Yeah, cavalier class, uh, which is a pathfinder thing, but still, yeah. like the. It's the, actually a 5e thing, too. Is it 5e? I yeah. have no idea, but well, yeah. No, it, it is as well as well. Yeah, saying. yeah, because the, the, I did play a mounted paladin on a dinosaur in our, like, longest run. You were an orca lady, too. 
Yeah, she was, um, well, technically merfolk, but yeah, like orc. Who, uh, who, uh, who uh, you were a paladin, but you served Sukiyomi. Yeah, exactly. The moon! Oh, what if I get into that later? But yeah, um, yeah, like a moon-worshipping paladin who rode a dinosaur. Which, and also, yeah, I've got a, that's always fun. But I love the, the aspects of the pair of the two of them fighting together, Fang and Spears co-fighting. And, like, I fucking love the aspect of that. And hopefully we'll see more and more, like, dynamics and classes and stuff like that in the future. Um, I also wanted to get into a little bit of fan theory stuff regarding the witches. Like I alluded to earlier, or joked anyway, the um, the female witch figure that like turned into the Black 2D figure, people do associate her with Aku in some fashion, maybe being a similar being or like a direct like, influence on him, but also the female cult of Aku that was in the future series. Also people associate with the witch cult in this thing, in the past, or the quote unquote past. Um... And it also goes into the fan theory that possibly the witches were behind the Plague of Madness, given the presumably supernatural nature of the plague and the coloring that it does cause the zombies that it infects with the bright green. is also the effect of all their magic. Uh, people were saying that maybe they had some kind of association with that. But it's all just baseless fan theory stuff. Um, That's true. I mean, like, like, of course. Well, like when that episode started with, with the Plague of Madness, I mean, we were just like... The t- typical normal Saturday dinosaur morning, where we're, we're eating, we're drinking, and all of a sudden this motherfucker shows up. Who's <laughs> yeah, already fucking been, Larry? Yeah, if, if, if fucking Larry shows up, and he's already just like you know, you know diseased to hell. Like, like we don't we don't know how he got there. We don't know like, where that disease originated or what the progenitor was. Like it could very well have been the witches. Yeah, could have been yeah, or at least something similar, like some kind of supernatural thing. Yeah. Um, but in that episode also, when uh, when Larry came in, you know what one of my first thoughts was actually. Oh, so he's on bath salts too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but no, but seriously, but I mean, some of these, I mean, obviously they're just that. Theories. Of course. The Aku one is a bit of a stretch. Look, we already had Gendy admit to the Dexter thing. Uh, I think that's what you said. No. Yeah, so I mean. Mm, well, he, hey, we all know that, uh, what was it? Uh, Powerpuff Girls does take place in the same universe as Jedi Samurai Jack given that dog poster. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, I mean, I mean, we all know that Dexter Gen- appeared in Powerpuff Girls. So there is there is a Gendy verse, yeah. <laughs> but um, either way, but yeah, I mean, this one seems more plausible. Oh, yeah. As in, like, we don't know what the uh, what did you call it? The progenitor. The, the, yeah, yeah. The progenitor is could have been witches. Could have been Tiamat. Could have been anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a fun little side thing about like with the, the magic aspects of this, whatever this area is of the primal universe, how things work and what things are associated with. Because there are interconnected aspects that possibly do get alluded to, and we'll see about that in our next episode. Which, by the way, this is my favorite one of this group of episodes. I was going to say, spoiler alert, this is the episode, the first watch through, I hated... And this time, I fucking loved it, and I have tons to talk about after it. <laughs> oh, this, this is the one. Okay, okay. This was um, my least favorite in the first time I watched it. Second time I watched it, I fucking loved it, watching with you guys even more so. Mm-hmm. Well, episode nine, I believe this is, right? Yep, episode nine. The, the Night, Night Feeder. Feeder. Why <laughs> did you sound like Al Simmons from Spawn? <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil Night Feeder. <laughs> <laughs> um, we start off a literally... At night, I believe. Yep, we see a large Smilodon sniffing around, just kind of going around looking for some food, as we see it suddenly become alert Wait, is and that snarling. what that saber-toothed tiger is called? That's what the real name for like, what, what is quote, it is. Quote, unquote, saber-toothed tiger is called no. a Smilodon. Smilodon. I've, I've yeah, never actually the real, That's that. the real term for them, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, he's a smiley boy. <laughs> yeah, smiley <laughs> boy. <laughs> but yeah, we see that it is, like, sniffing around, kind of exploring, and it, it sees some kind of predator in the bushes. It kind of snarls up, like, you know, gets up a real rigid, like a, a scared cat, of course. And suddenly something whooshes out and attacks it. We see, like, you know, birds fly up and we see Spear and Fang kind of sitting around a fire quietly. Like, what the hell was that? Yeah, and, like, even Spear, immediately Spear looks out in the darkness, starts sweating, gra- grabs his spear, waits, and then just lets go of it. Like, okay, I don't have to worry about anything this yep. time. The next day we see them scaling a really hot uh, cliff on a really hot day as they continue to sweat and they enter a jungle. They are. They come across a foul-smelling puddle of blood. We see and, tons of flies around. Well, yeah, and before before we see what it even is, Fang sniffs the air and literally roars and bolts in the other direction. Other than the ta- other than that time, she had a very very big like fear of snakes mm-hmm. during that traumatizing time in our first set of ep- episodes. She's never done this before. Yeah. So it's like it, like I mean, Spear obviously goes to take a look anyway. And even Fang is like, 
walks up to him and starts roaring like, dude, what the fuck? We gotta get out of here. Yep. But he doesn't. He goes up and he sees the smashed up Smilada and a saber tooth tiger kind of just all mulched up and yeah. not really eaten. And, and yeah, and we're not talking about like just dead like those uh like those um uh sora uh, sauropods yeah. from the zombie episode no 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 this thing has been literally mutilated and pulped yep completely smashed up uh fan growls but spear goes up and investigates and he's kind of sees like the weird eyeball and just the weird flies and he's like what the hell happened what did this? and even and even uh fang goes over sniffs the meat doesn't like the smell yep they continue. They kind of just move on, and they continue to travel on. As night approaches, we see once again. I'm gonna assume is the night feeders POV, as it's moving incredibly fast through a number of forests, like forest trees, like sprinting past everything. Uh, I say we see a beautiful bright green tribe of some sort of ceratopsians. I wrote in my notes it's either a styracosaurus or diabloceratops, which was another given the porn type. Diablos. Yeah. The Diabloceratops is an actual dinosaur that, yeah, uh, given the horn structure and the crest, I was like, it looks kind of like a mix between the Styracosaur and a Di- Diabloceratops, but I wasn't yep. sure. And of course, we see when we see all of these, uh, you know, it's just a herd of them moving slowly. One of them stops to take a drink of water, which we all know in this series up till now, like uh, all the way through now. We know how good of an idea that is. Yeah, but we do see a quick cutaway to Fang and Spear kind of hearing something like, you know, roaring, and they kind of then we see the pack beginning to get hunted by the Night Feeder. And again, uh, like this actually shows not because we we saw the attack barely with the um the Smilodon was it called? Yeah, yeah, the Smilodon, and we we didn't see what happens in this one. We get nothing but a POV of this thing literally ripping these things, cutting these things, and yeah, like half like slicing, mutilating like, diagonally all slicing them. Them in half. It's like what the Not fuck even is this stopping thing? to eat. It just mutilates the yeah, shit out this of Yeah, whole all pack. Of them. Yeah, we see the whole pack kind of like running in fear and clicking together, but that doesn't even help because it still just manages to slaughter them all. And then we get Spear like wanting to go out and for the, again, first time this has ever happened, we see that Fang is absolutely like paranoid. Yeah, she's shaking her head no, like, really emphatically. Yeah, like, and, no, like, not eyes, eyes wide open, looking around, making sure nothing gets to them kind of thing. I'm like, I was worried for Fang because she's never done this before. Yeah, but they just try to, they settle down and they just listen out and keep an eye out all night long. Oh yeah, that's right, they have a yelling competition yep. and, like, just Fang's just like, Shakes head like no, no, no. Yep. Uh, in the morning, we see a cute little Compsognathus kind of chasing a little bug around, uh, just jumping and leaping at it as the pair eats, so like goes fishing into the lake. Um, and then once again, they like they kind of get freaked out by some noise as they see the Compsognathus and he kind of jumps up on a branch and they're just like, "Shoot, get out of here, you little idiot!" And it's like, and he just like, jumps off the bridge and escapes. Yep. So and then as he's looking in the direction of all of this noise, a whole bunch of like actual birds, yeah. just a whole flock of them over this really big red blood filled like area. We don't even see the details. Yeah, and we see like the, we just see the blood, we see the birds, and we see uh, Spear kind of looking sad about having not done something about it. Uh, they continue to travel on. This time they are trapped in a windstorm. As their journey becomes a halt, they hunker down behind a large boulder and kind of just kind of wait out the storm. But then they keep hearing a crazy scratching and screeching. They're like, "Oh no!" And they look around, and it's just a tree. Yeah, it's just trees making like trees making like <laughs> windy noises, and it kind of sounds like a dinosaur roar, but it's not. Yep. Uh, we see a random scene of a mantis eating a bug in great detail. Is this some kind of foreshadowing? I don't know. At night. <laughs> at night. Yep. And by the fire, <laughs> uh, at night again, we see. Um, they, they are extremely on edge. They are both sweating. They're both fearing any single noise. Um, even the fire noise is just like crackling. It's kind of creaking them out because they're just like, what the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. And But they do manage to fall asleep. Yep, they do manage to fall asleep as the fire slowly goes out and they hear the screeching of the night feeder. And yeah, so they're again on edge and they look around first and since they hear the screeches but then it goes silent... They both start running the opposite direction. Yep, they immediately flee instead of fighting this thing. And in the um, forest, it is, like, misty. Like, you yep, cannot... They, like, a it's large already, fog bank, apparently. Yeah, it's like, it's already nighttime, so you can't already see. But then add a heavy fog on top of it, and it's even worse. Anyone who drives in fog at night knows this. Oh, yeah. It's, it is it's terrible. Unseeable. Uh The night feeder screeches and chases after them as we see it kind of, like, super fast cutting through logs and trees. Yeah, it's cut, like, literally it's decimating really, yeah. trees. It's, like, completely blowing things up invisibly. 
specifically. We don't even know what the fuck it is. We can't see any aspect of it except for the devastation behind it. Uh, it's extremely fast and extremely strong, and they, they cannot stop it whatsoever, but uh, Spear just flees for his life. Yep, they both uh, pretty much flee. And, like, they get separated for a little bit, but fortunately there's, like, an opening where Fang can actually see yep. uh, Spear. And then I can't... I don't know what the hell went on with this, because... Fang jumps over into the fog. You hear some kind of scrape going on. And then you see, like, Fang's face covered in either blood or tar or something. Yeah, some kind of something. weird black goo. Uh, yeah. She kind of just really irritates her. She screams and tries to get it off of her face as the Night Feeder screeches extremely loudly, deafening all of them, like we said, oh, Tigrex yeah, style. Yeah, pretty much like Tigrex style, only it lasts, like, it's just nonstop. Yeah. And to the point where Spear is just... A wild swinging his spear like I don't know what's going on it hurts please stop kind yep. of thing the night feeder sprints at spear intending to kill him but his f- spear scrapes the ground causing sparks and the night feeder immediately retreats in fear and I like how this is all in the POV so it like goes zooms forward then you just see like actual spear like hitting the ground with the sparks and then the POV literally just like Zoom backs out. away yep. As he, he like, his, like, realizes what happened, as both Spear and Fang notice what happened. Yep. It's, it, they continue to dashes at him again, and strikes the ground again, and once again it flees off. Yep. And then, one of my favorite, artistically speaking, uh, moments in this game, uh, in this game, in this uh, show, it's like really pitch black night, and you start seeing the POV, you don't see anything at first, but then you see like the red trees yeah. in like the pitch black, oh, yeah. and then every once in a while you'll see like a flash of flame, and you know, it, the, the thing shrieks and runs away, and it just keeps going like this. With the black, like, the black background and, like, the the red and, like, the bright red and yellow of the flames, it just makes for an awesome contrast. And, you know, you see Spear, like, you know, making sparks. Then you see, like, random flames appearing. And this thing, this POV is freaking out because of the flame. And then you see Spear with his, like, with his spear with the tip on fire on Fang just... Drawing a freaking line of fire, yeah, circling around this, and letting just, all the tree and grass on fire as they run, or as as Chris would say, "Wow, gonna burn down an entire forest just for this one guy, right?" <laughs> oh yeah, um, but yeah, and then it's a good uh, thing Smokey the Bear hasn't been infected yet, yeah, right? Yeah. Or maybe he's the prehistoric uh, ancestor. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, and then of course this thing's freaking out because it is surrounded by fire, and all you see as it's like freaking out is the spe- the flame tip spear like get launched hit it and we finally for the only time in this episode see what the hell we're dealing with take it away matt yep it is a weird long snouted three clawed some sort of like theropod dinosaur we're not sure what it's some kind of bipedal like uh, predator flailing around as it's covered it gets completely like doused in fire uh, it flings around and kind of screeches as it turns into a gigantic pillar, and then it just kind of screeches out as it turns into ash and is finally dead. And we're talking like, we're not talking about just like regular old three fingers. We're talking like large ass fucking daggers or yeah. short sword kind of claws Long on ass this claws. thing. Yep. Uh, it burns in the fire as Spear and Fang look on, just kind of like, geez, what the fuck do we deal with? As the Night Feeder is finally defeated. And that is the end of the episode. Oh, buddy. Like I said, this one right here is my favorite. Not I, it, not really because of the story aspect of it. Because, you know, it's like, it's kind of monster of the week kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Only this one was different because the vast majority of it, I like the art direction they took and like how they handled scenes because every single moment you you were like you saw the night the night uh, feeder except for the very beginning it's always been in its pov yeah so it makes for some really interesting like you know scenes with that but also that ending part when uh spear and fang actually get to like try to trap it into it just the contrast of like the really because uh i don't know if you guys know this but our friend chris I was watching this episode on his TV. He's got an OLED. So when you see black on the screen, it is like actually black. Not just like maybe a little bit lit in the background. No, it is like 100% black. Yeah, yeah, OLEDs are pretty great. And, and be, because of that, with the contrast of like the flame colors and everything like that, the color combinations and all that mm-hmm. stuff, and how they handled all of like the different flames and stuff, artistically speaking, it was like, 
my, in my head, it was like phenomenal. I know it's probably a little thing, but I'm it was very to the cool, little very things. beautiful looking. But yeah, um, like I said, when I originally saw this episode, I very much disliked it. It was like my bottom, like least liked episode for some reason. I think maybe because I felt like it was after Plague of Madness is like insane insanity, and then the witches thing leading to so much like theorizing. Uh, the first episode in this part being like a continuation of a previous event. And then this like finale coming up, I felt like this felt like a filler to me at the time I first watched it. Um, and then I want to go into like actual like opinions on filler shows and episodes and stuff like that because like <laughs> there's always the infamous Naruto, which like half the series was fucking filler after the R- Richard Sasuke arc. Bleach, which was fucking terrible. Bleach, which was the reason that fucking show died because the fucking filler was so awful and prevalent. Uh, but then there's also the whole like fan uh, annoyingness about like quote unquote filler episodes, like with Steven Universe. Any episode that was not like, plot progression, people, like, despised and shit on the episode all the time, any towny episode and stuff like that, which I was never a fan of. But, like, I, yeah, I really didn't feel like this episode like, progressed the plot, so I didn't like it at the time. Uh, upon second viewing, actually trying to figure out what the fuck the Night Feeder is, and this is what, like we said, we uh, there's tons and tons of theories and speculation on what the fuck it was. Um, the original concept art for whatever the Night Feeder was, it looked more like the fucking Rancor from Star Wars, it was like a flat, stout-headed little like monster thing with a monster really? head, like long, like arms, you know, flailing around, being crazy. And this is like one of the first concept arts. Yeah, the actual concept art of it dying showed like it, like it looked like the Rancor, some like weird little monster, not in that dinosaur in any way. Huh. But the actual being that is the the Night Feeder, given its like snout shape and finger amount, uh, people like, theorize it was some kind of like baryonyx or irritator, like a spinosaurid, um, one of those long snouted like aquatic dinosaurs, but. What it actually could be, given the clues that we have in this episode, the fact that it only attacks at night, the fact that Fang was traumatized by whatever this being was, and, and of what, course... And what it left behind. Yep, yeah, and the black goo that it left behind. And also, there's one other thing about this episode that seems fairly innocuous on the first viewing, but maybe an actual hint. Wait. That little Compsignathus hunting the bug... Huh. How many fingers did it all hit? Three fingers. Long, thin snout. Black goo. Where have we seen that turn something large and violent before? Only at night and then normal in the morning? Hmm. Oh. Are you saying oh. it's going to be a weird dino? Nope. They're saying that that Compsignathus was affected by the same black goo that transformed the ape men into a large, violent form. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> that that's is... a really interesting theory. <laughs> yep. That is the primary thing that people theorize about it because the fact that the goo wears off in the morning, it makes things gigantic and violent, and the Compsignathus is the only dinosaur with a very similar physical structure to the Night Feeder that we ever see in the episode. Huh. But for it to act the way it does... It has to get access to that black goose somewhere, somehow, to transform it into that. Yeah, which we still don't know what that is or where yeah. it comes from. But what the fuck was that stuff that Fang... Yeah, it was like literally that explicitly that black goose. But also, like I said, as you kept mentioning, Fang's trauma to the smell could be a reference to the black goo, which that ape man used to fucking pummel the shit out of her. Right, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That, that makes... Like, okay. Oh. Like, yeah. that actually oh. makes sense. And see... That's the thing I hate about theory crafting, but I like at the same time. I hate it, I hate theory crafting because people get wild. Bullshit. Yeah, you can make anything up from anything. Just, I mean, unfortunately, evidence, yeah. just look at the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom. Of course. And I gotta be honest, Matt. Like, uh, like this being my first viewing, I was kind of going through a, a similar experience as you. It's just like I'm watching this. I'm just like, yeah, this is a, this is a fine episode. It, it doesn't really feel like it's progressing the plot at all. It definitely feels more filler. I didn't really think much of it, but getting this theory out there I'm just like oh my god if that if that is confirmed by you know Gandhi himself or like something in a later episode that would be fucking amazing yeah. and make the episode like way more relevant than you might think Absolutely, it really, yeah, yeah. It really would yeah yeah because there are a lot of aspects of the night feeder that are never explicitly stated like why isn't it tracking them in the morning or there's no attacks in the morning yeah. and the fact that yeah you never see what it is and like yeah the goo which is never explained but only seen in that one scene where Fang jumps on it it's just like weird stuff like that it's like yeah that's a lot of weird stuff and it's just yeah, it's a very bizarre episode but when you put that together it becomes a lot more fucking enjoyable to watch on the second rewatch <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah, watching with that like theory in mind, it's fucking way more like crazy because that that comes and needs to come back twice in a weird cutaway where it's chasing the bug, and then when they're by the river and they get freaked out by it for a second and they kind of shoot it off. Like that's the only the other, only other dinosaur in that whole episode that's like that, and they kind of like just like shows up twice for some reason. Right. And yeah, the I, the final silhouette of the night fear does explicitly look similar to that thing. So yeah, that's a fun huh. little weird thing about that. Very cool. Yeah. See again, like 
I've, I've said I've said this many times. I've sung the song so many times, but it's really the little things that are the most fascinating in a show. Oh yeah, especially when you can do it like that because that went under my radar. Yep. Now that you said that, I'm thinking on this, and it's just like, well, damn, you're right, yeah. kind of thing. You might be on to something, theorists. Yeah, but that episode, yeah, that like I said, on the second viewing, I really, really, really liked the episode a lot more than the last one. Yeah, okay. Oh, I mean, the last time I watched uh, it. Last yeah, episode. last time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not the next this, episode. This whole path I really fucking enjoy, because the, the Plague of Madness, of course, is a fucking incredible. The Witch episode in, in, in Judas is a whole bunch of insane ideas. And then the Night Feeders is a fun little slasher horror episode. Yeah. Um, and all the way up to the finale, which we're about to cover now. But, like, yeah, I really like that episode a lot. I'm glad that you liked it, too, Ben. Yeah, like, oh, my God. Like, in this, in, like, actually, and I've told Matt this at the beginning, but, uh, actually, I've said this at the beginning, but of all of season one, this one right here was actually my absolute favorite. And, like I said, not necessarily because of the story itself. Well, except for now when I, when you told me that theory that makes, uh, that blows everything out of the water. But I liked it in an artistic sense because of just how they treated that final fight scene kind of yeah. thing. Beautifully done. And Gen of course, because it's Gendy Tartatowski, we've seen his work before. Spot on, man. Spot and can on. we just say, too, like, it, like, one of the most interesting details about this particular uh, night, the monster is that, like, this motherfucker, as it's chasing, you know, sp uh, Spear and Fang, it's, like, slicing through trees, like, entire, like, we're talking probably, like, decade-old trees, big-ass trunks, one slice, clean hit, clean through, it's falling over in right. seconds. Like, this motherfucker's not kidding around. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that thing's got, like, arms of fucking steel. It really does, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, because the only thing we've seen do something like that was the giant dino uh, sauropod. Yeah. This is something that is not as big as... But it's able to cut down trees like they're nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, now we're just more and more we think about this. Th that black goo theory is looking a little bit more real. But we'll never have a confirmation, or probably there won't be one. Yeah, who knows? But <laughs> we're <laughs> literally at the finish line. The season finale of Primal. Yep. Episode ten. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll set up the fine. properly yeah. numbered so we don't have to fuck up and go. Ah, oh, fuck off. Episode anyway, ten. Episode 10? Slave of, of the, the scorpion. scorpion. We start off fishing. Yep, they're you see fishing these, like, the cute, like these adorable purplish pink fish, and spear, spears one, and is sm is happy because it's normal fish. Yeah. Then we see Fang walk up and go down to fish, and it's bigger fish. Yeah, he's a giant one. And of course, spear. I'm like, no, oh, you know what? That makes sense. You know, Fang has a bigger stomach. She needs something bigger. And what does spear do? Well, I don't like this fish anymore. Pops it up, throws it in the water. I'm like, yep. dude, really? We're, we're gonna have a dick fighting competition with a female yeah. dinosaur? <laughs> of course. Like, like, like a like a, like a, a very uh, quick scene from Avatar: The Last Airbender, where like Aang is like trying to share a melon between Momo and Appa, and like slices it where it's like the majority of it goes to Appa, and then Momo just like a like, man, what is this? And he's like, come on, that's fair. Appa's got five stomachs, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a very, very cute scene of them, like a very old school flashback to what they used to be like. Right. Um, and then of course, he sees a couple more fish as they swim away from him, and he sees a woman with a wooden thing around her neck jump out of the water. And oh, and we're and we're talking like in the scene, she uh, we just see her swimming underwater. She goes up to gasp for air, and she is like right in the camera. Yeah, a huge giant. And it bird. like and it like slow mos too. I'm just yeah. like. Okay, weird flex, but I'll see where you're going yeah, with Yeah, we see her kind of flee and run past Spear and Fang, and they're kind of like, what the hell? And then a massive, I did write it in my notes, so it is a Leoplerodon, yeah. presumably. Is a Leoplerodon? Yeah. Okay. Leoplerodon uh, jumps out of the water and starts attacking them as it drags Fang underwater. Uh, Spear helps, he's like kind of stares in shock as another human, but then he does stop to help Fang get rid of this giant monster and kills it. Uh, yep, and stabs it in the back of the head. And because Spear was the one who killed it, yeah. so, you know, it was like, Fish. Yeah, I would. Fang was anyway. like Fang was like bigger fish. In this case, Chris might get the reference because of certain videos we watched on YouTube. Spear kills this one as like bigger er fish. <laughs> yep. And then he doesn't actually like get the boast or anything because after he stabs it, he goes back under the water and Fang's just like, wait, what? And Spear is chasing after this uh, this person. Yep. We follow. He follows her into the bushes and eventually they stop and stare at each other. Um, and she, of course, we yeah, she's like panting, like you know, like she's afraid. 
And, you know, she's, like, kind of covering her face, like, about ready to get hit. But all Spear does is, is he, like, kind of squats down, yep. Spear on the ground, like, okay. You know, kind of like, it's kind of like the whole thing with dogs, where, like, yeah, one wants to, like, be friends, yeah. just gets lower, below yep. eye level kind of thing. And, so, and she's, like, you know, she kind of calms down a little bit, still on edge. Yep, and then, of course, Fang jumps out of the bushes and screams and roars in her face as she flies off, like, scared. And, like, and, 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 of course, Spear's just got this face, like, are you fucking serious, Fang? Yep, she uh, runs down and they continue to give chase. Eventually, she is cornered by a cliffside, and Spear once again shows her that he is calm as, like, Fang comes over to scare her again. He kind of like, calms Fang down, like, okay, come on. She's under my control. She's, you know, she's chill. Don't worry. Yeah, and, and then when, just he, when he squats other. down, even Fang, like, walks over and, like, squats, squats down, down yep. as well. And of course, you know, this random person. Yep. She also um, lowers herself against the wall saying, like, okay. Yep, fine. she just sits down and, you know, she kind of like, kind of hugs herself like she's a little bit mm-hmm. cold. So Spear gets up. Fang is just eyes on her. Yep. And, and uh, he goes to make a fire for them to warm themselves at. Yep. And she, wa- and, you know, this, I, I guess, lady, you would say. Yeah. It does look like she's wearing a dress at least. Yep. Um, <clears throat> she, she, like, goes over to the flame. Looks at Spear, just staring at her. Looks at Fang, who growls. She gets scared. Uh, the, the, this mysterious lady gets scared. And just Spear just, like, shoves Fang, yeah, like, dude, stop. Yeah, shut up. Uh, look, look, she kind of gets more cozy by the fire. And then they kind of just, they snuggle up and go to sleep. As to showing that they are completely peaceful. Oh, uh, that, that, that is Fang and Spear snuggle up yeah. and sleep. As the woman continues to stare at them very concerned, we see at night that the woman is kind of like doing weird moon praises or prayers to the moon for some reason. Um, and by and the Spear way... Spear watches on like, what the hell's going on? Well, and the reason why Spear notices is because we mentioned she's got something around her neck, but she also has like broken chains and like yeah, uh, bracers. Yeah, yeah. what, what? Manacles. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Manacles around her wrist. And every time she moves her arm, you just hear like the chain going. Shh, shh, shh. And she's like doing something. Yeah, but we see that uh, in the morning they kind of wander off and she gives following to them. She seems kind of confused and wondrous of the setting around her, all the weird animals and weird bugs and stuff. Mm-hmm. As Fang continues to not like her and not want to even be touched by her when she bumps into her by accident. Yep. We see some gigantic dragonflies accosting her by accident, and Fang kind of grabs and eats one to try to stop them from bugging her, and she's like, she gives him a little <laughs> smile, like, oh, you silly butt. Hey, yeah, she, she yeah, like, this, this new person just smiles like, oh, she does, uh, this di- this Fang does care. Yeah, and also uh, we see the next night, uh, we see later on that they're eating some kind of goat-like animal. I wrote that there was an animatic, another, like, deleted scene thing of what the thing could have been, which was a Calicotherium, which is a large gorilla-like horse prehistoric animal that I really, really love the aesthetic of and the name of. Uh, but it was a cutout for some reason. It just cut to them eating the animal. She, they are kind of eating the raw meat of it, looking all gross and gunky because they're a couple of unkempt people. Uh, but she's kind of like sees it, doesn't want to eat the uncooked meat, so she goes and gathers some berries and vegetables and stuff and makes a little stew in a turtle shell. Yeah, which uh, like we've, we've seen uh, like we've seen Spear like cook some meat before, but this yeah. is like the first time we've seen like an actual meal being prepared. Yep, yeah, she actually makes them and offers a bit to uh, as uh, Fang smells it. She offers a bit to Spear, but Fang jumps up, grabs the turkey leg, and like. Spear jumps on her face trying to get her to let go of it as she runs off and chomps it down like a fucking bad dog always does. Yeah, Trust right. Me. <laughs> um, but um, it is safe. It is like safe to say because we've been talking about like Crow Manion uh, Spear and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It has. It was like it. It is confirmed, and you can tell by the way that this mysterious woman looks like. This is Homo sapien, yeah. aka what we are now. She is very much a regular human-looking person. Yeah, so she is, she is Homo sapien, and we forgot to also mention that she's bald and has something on the back. Yeah, of her a weird head. like a weird uh, tattoo on the back of her head. Yeah, um, um, Spear tries some vegetables that she offers him, and he fucking hates it. Goes back to his. Oh well, yeah, nasty we just, well yeah because he's a man. Men, men don't really vegetables. like vegetables. <laughs> well, okay, some notwithstanding, because Chris, I think you do like vegetables, don't you? I, I do, but uh, I don't eat them as much as I should. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's, sure. that's fair. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's fair. I mean, I'm the same way, yep. really. But yeah. But, the... you know, but he's like typical, like, new thing, eat new thing. This not meat. Spits it, yeah. throws it. Go and back to meat. Even, even things just like, om nom nom. Yeah, I'll eat that. Yum yum uh, the next night, we see that she continues to praise the moon, and he's kind of looking on again, like, what the hell is she doing? Um, in the day, we see that she has a very stiff neck, as he like her, her head is still in that weird headstock from Edison. And then Spear does the most rational thing a man of his caliber would do. He grabs her by the fucking, by the fucking neck thing, yep. um, pulls, pulls her over, sits her down, picks up, uh, like, brings Fang's uh, mouth 
opens it a little bit and puts it to the edge of it. Yep. And this random woman just looks and is just like, okay, I don't know if I trust this. And in one bite, Thing breaks the uh, wooden thing, and now she her neck is free, and she's just like rubbing her neck, like holy crap, this is great. But then Spear then immediately grabs her, uh, grabs one of her arms, yep. puts it on a rock, starts to lift an even bigger rock, and you know she kind of like recoils a little bit, and then Spear hits the uh, metal, what manacle, you call it, manacle, yeah, yep. yeah manacle, and it breaks. Yep. And then, you know, he puts the other one there, and she, you know, braces herself, and then it breaks as well, making her completely and utterly free of all of her bindings. Yep, she stands up and stretches, and we see how she is way taller than him, and she kind of stares and thanks them, and she says... Wait, wait, wait. She actually does look at the sunset, yeah. first time fully free, and, like, enjoys the moment. Yep, and then she turns to him, points to herself, and says, Mira... And kind of stares at them, where like the spirit is completely unreactive. And, just kind and of, of course, to it. like she kind of has like a furled eyebrow, like huh? And then she tries, she tries to do it like every other person does. Instead of just saying Mira, she goes Mira, like trying to yeah. get him to say it slower. And then all he does is turns and walks away. Yep, he walks off and down the thing as it continue. Which, by the way, folks, if you've been listening to our other episode on Primal, this right here, her saying her name. First word ever in this entire series. Yep, we've heard. Yep. Yeah, we've heard some like. <laughs> we've heard <laughs> lots of yelling. Yeah, lots of grunting and weird vocalizing from the witches, but first actual language. Yeah, this is the, like the first actual moment of language. Yeah. So you know they walk away, and Mira still fo- now Mira follows, and as they're walking, she starts picking up random things. Yep, random and, like, branches and yep. leaves and all kinds of stuff. Strange. And, you know, she, you see her lugging all of this stuff, and at one night, you see her actually working on something. And then, um, uh, they're, they're at a river, you know, yep. Mira's washing her face, and then Fang and Spear are chasing a... Looks like a moa, or possibly a weird feathery oviraptor, I'm not really sure. But yeah, it's like still got a bird-like, large bird-like thing that I assume is a moa. Uh, it kind of escapes from both Fang and Spear trying to attack it. As it flees away, we see it get killed by a arrow. <laughs> and then, of course, everyone's like stops, looks over to where the arrow came from, and you see Mira. Chris, Chris was wonderful with this because she grabbed the stick and Chris is like, oh, you're going to make a bow and arrow out of that? Then he saw that she was lugging a whole bunch of other things, and so he's like, Mm, maybe not. And then we see the arrow actually hit, and Chris is like, oh, it was a bow and arrow, <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah, just, she's, apparently she's good at making a bow and arrow, and she's good at archery. Yep, she apparently knows archery, which is the first time we've ever seen anything that complicated from anything yep, in the series. Yep, this is true. Uh, we see that next day they are roasting the bird over a big fire, um, and then we see her keep trying to say her name, Mira, again, they're completely still non-reacting. Oh, uh, wait, yeah, um, yeah, he, he's not, and, uh, Spear, like, is not reacting, holds up the meat, like, you want it, and she, like, kind of looks to, uh, to the side, like, like, she's trying to think of how to communicate this, and she just, you know, waves her hands and shakes her head. And then, you know, just uh, Spear kind of looks sad, but just starts eating again. Yep, she begins to draw in the sand. She draws, like, a little flower-like structure, but then next to her, Spear draws the scorpion symbol that is on the back of her head. And then, I this is, remember how I told you I did some research? Mm-hmm. I did research on this. Of course. Because Mira starts talking, literally in the subtitles, it just says, speaks native language. Yeah. And it's not subtitled at all, folks. Nope. She's just speaking in her native tongue and drawing because we know that, you know, Spear knows drawing. And so she draws about how it looks like there's a bunch of people living in a she village, a village yep. and people go and attack the village. Like riding in on a ship. Yeah, riding in on yep. a ship. Um, and, you know, they, they would take the ship to this mountain area with a big horned creature. Presumably and, the leader. Right, right. And then, um, just like the three, pe- the pe- three people she drew in the village, she draws like lines connecting them as if they were chains. Yep. And then, you know, she then draws a line between one of them, signifying her, draws an arrow, and draws a big a picture of Fang. Yeah. So long and short of it, from what we can discern from this, is um, you know, she's like, okay, you know, we- I was living in a village. People tried to take the village over, and they were ta- and they enslaved us, and were trying to take us to their home. But I broke free and ran here. What I did my research on because I was curious what she was speaking. Mm-hmm. Do you want to take a guess at what language that was? Nope. Okay. Do you want to? Take I a know guess? what language it is. Oh, you actually did your research on this too. No, I actually know the language yeah. because I studied it in college. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
I don't remember you saying that, but yeah, yeah it's it's Arabic. Yep. She's oh. speaking Arabic. Like, I had to go on the internet and dig a little bit on that. Yeah. Yeah, she's speaking unsubtitled Arabic. Yeah, specifically wow. a um, Lebanese dialect of Arabic. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is different from the one that I studied in college, which was like basic bitch Arabic. Yep. Um, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, um, you know, as she did all of this, you know... Spear looks at the, especially the part with the uh, big leader horn thingy, and you know he's just like kind of thing. But finally, they had a moment of communication. Yep, they are finally following <coughs> up on each other and actually know a little bit more. Uh, the night continues as we see them walk, or the day continues as they walk to a very large river. Uh, they don't think that they can cross it, but Spear jumps back up onto Fang's back. They kind of stare at Mira for a second, and Spear, uh, even and Fang's is like, "Get on up." Yeah, uh, Mira's just like. Me? Yeah, you get on. <laughs> like, uh, me, Rah? Yeah, um, then, don't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, she jumps up on top of Fang's back as they go into the water. They begin to slowly walk, and then they dive underneath in like a really cool, beautiful I just, swim sequence. I love, I love the swim sequence because mm-hmm. Mira is holding her breath, like in the puffy cheek, like holding her breath, and she has a face like, "What the hell is going on?" Meanwhile, but, pro- uh, meanwhile, Spirit just like, "Yeah, this is just just our normal Tuesday." Yeah, right, right, because right, he's just like he still has that stoic face holding his breath, and you know, Fang is just regular face, just going. It's just like. Mira's just like, what is going on? And Spears just like, you'll get used to it. Yeah, don't worry about it. And then they get out of the water, and even Mira's just like smiling, like, huh, that was weird, but I like that. Yep, it's very, very cute. We see that they find another mountain cave. Uh, as they begin to go up it, Fang spots some weird monkey men skulls on the outskirts of it. Oh yeah, and then um, there's like loose rocks, and you know, Mira and Spear are going up them just fine. <laughs> Fang is just like, um. Rock is yeah. safe. Rock is safe. Spear goes over the thing and yells at her. Yeah. So she starts walking backwards. Yeah, all right, fuck that. <laughs> then Mira's just like, hold on a second. Goes down the mountain and starts putting a bug yeah, giant on the rocks. <laughs> and just like with cats or dogs or something, just here's a treat, follow treat. Here's a treat, follow treat. And Spear's just like, Smiles. Oh, wow. Like, nice. Yeah, it didn't work. You can train her, huh? <laughs> yep, they finally enter the cave, and they begin to pack up for the night. Uh, we see that at night she begins to continue to pray to the moon, and Spear kind of asks, like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, it just draws a moon on the bo- uh, like, uh, just draws a moon, like, pretty much asking her about that. Yeah. She doesn't draw anything, she just says more in Arabic. Yeah, a little bit, just saying, like, you know, the worship or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. And she kind of just goes to sleep without any other explanation. Yep. Uh, and then it, the next morning we see, uh, what was it? Oh, first we see Fang reacting, roaring as we see. Spear as we wake hear, up. we hear footsprint. Foot, yeah. uh, foot we also steps. saw like a shadowy figure moving when they were setting up at night for the camp. Who right. Saw, like, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, the next morning we see some crazy, as they were referred to in the uh, animatics, monkey men type dudes. <laughs> is what is how Gendy wrote them in the in the animatics. <laughs> <laughs> they are monkey men type dudes. Uh, but more specifically, these are likely given that they look like a mix between the Australopithecus and the Homo erectus. These are most likely Homo habilis, which is another uh, prehistoric man form. And they're actually more like they're like pretty much more like just upright apes than right. um, Australopithecus were. Um, and then of course, you know, there's some. Um, they have Mira tied up and even like uh, mouth covered, not yeah. necessarily gagged. But um, and they start carrying her away. And, you know, Spear and Fang are killing all of these yeah, things. Yeah, once again, typical. more chomping in half, more, like, head splitting, more, like, brain knocking out. This is insane, crazy, insanely brutal, bloody... Uh, uh, more, but, more evisceration of, a, of an entire species. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but um, Spear notices that the arrows and the bow are still there, and he has an idea. He pulls a Dark Souls, only not quite. Because he takes, this regular, <laughs> he takes a regular-ass bow that uh, Mira made... Puts his spear as the arrow, pulls it back, looses it, without breaking it, mind you, because he had oh, a yeah. whole bunch of draw strength. Yeah. And then when he lets go, it literally, giant spear is a ballista-type arrow, yeah. pierces three of them. I was going to say, neither of you two have ever watched Game of Thrones. No. So you've right. never seen the Battle for the Wall where the giants have their bows that are literally fucking harpoon-sized giants with bows. They're just like, bam, <laughs> blasting the wall and blasting tons of people off of the wall with yeah. them. Uh-huh. It's, it's so fucking cool. <laughs> when they actually see the giants, it's like, oh, fuck. And it's just like, these all the all the watchmen are just getting completely mowed down by these giant harpoon-sized arrows that are just blasting right? through them. And like the only thing I can think <laughs> of is, 
wait a minute, he's using great arrows for a great bow, but he doesn't have a great bow. That's not how Dark Souls works. Yeah, it's insanely cool. But um, yeah, they continue to jump off, smashing and bashing and killing oh, all the monkeys yeah, and since again. He doesn't have, and since he doesn't have a spear, he actually picks up one of the hammers yeah, that Yeah, that's made. another reason that they, that they are like slightly above the... Uh, the eight men from that other episode because they're actually using tools to actually kill people, to kill uh, at least him with. But yeah, he is like smashing them up with their own hammers into really cool, nasty, bloody scenes. Um, he runs and follows them all the way down to the beach that they were at earlier, and we see piles and piles of the monkeys riddled with arrows. Something killed, like, that filled them with arrows and killed and, them all. And mind you, well, actually, that's after we hear Mira scream. Yeah, we hear her scream. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again the bow and the arrow were left behind at the camp. So obviously Mira did not do this. Yeah. First time we've seen fletching of any kind that's not from Mira. Yeah. And of course other monkey men are dead and uh, Spear does not pull out the arrow. He just looks at the fletching and then hears the screaming again, runs to the beach and sees what looks like uh, the back of a longboat with yep. all the paddles of, going through. Yeah. And of course he's looking like what's going on and with the sun, because it's a sail, you just see as the sun starts to go behind the sail, you see that scorpion logo. Yep, the same scorpion tattoo that's on the back of her head. Yep. As it and goes of off course, into the sun. It goes and... off into the sun, and Spear just looks, and it like zooms in on his face, and for the first time ever, he says, Mira. Mira. And I have to admit, like, when I saw the, the, when I first saw the tattoo on the back of Mira's head, like... I something in my gut told me that it's like that looks like some kind of branding, like so. I mean, it, it, it was probably also because it was juxtaposed with the um, with the headstock and the shackles, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm just like, thinking like like these things uh, together suggest to me that like this person was recently enslaved, and that is like the branding of the person enslaving her. Yeah, I mean yeah. that would that, that does kind of check out. Yeah. yeah, that's more that's more that amazing Gendy wordless storytelling. Yeah. Hey, like, okay, yeah. and these then context we, clues yeah. are right, and <laughs> then and then we see the sale, and that basically confirmed my suspicion. Oh yeah, right, that's yeah, incredible. So yeah. it's just like great, and of course, after that word, after the second word in the entire series, um, you know, uh, Fan yeah. gives a big Thank old roar, roar, and that's where the episode ends. That's where the season of Primal ends. Yep, for a just... very long time before the next season came out. Woo! That is a lot to yep. take in, folks. This is an insanely great series. Uh, what did you two think of that last episode? Oh, uh, it was pretty great. It was it was a lot of like it, it was just as a season uh, finale. I think it worked out pretty well. It, Absolutely, yeah. It definitely progressed some plot around. Well, okay, so I'm not sure. It, it's kind of hard to say if there's like an overarching plot of Primal. I mean, it, it's pretty much a matter of like you know just the adventures of Spit. Uh, Almost did it again. Spear and Fang. <laughs> For a moment, I thought you were going to say spit and Fang. I was like, that's <laughs> spit and Fang. <laughs> no, um, but... Yeah. Just like, yeah, just the adventures of them trying to survive. That's oh, yeah. pretty much the show. So, like, there's not a whole lot of depth in terms of overarching plot. Uh, the, the individual episodes usually uh, have, have their own intricacies of, like, e even though they're, it's, they're kind of, like, self-contained episode plots uh, to, to an extent. Yeah. Um, but this definitely feels like it is going to set up for a new development in like, in their adventures. You know, it's highly likely that, you know, fear... God damn it. Yeah. Spear <laughs> and Fang, I fucking... Why? Why, brain? Uh, are are gearing up to to, uh, to go chase down the ship uh, and, and, you know, fucking murder these people and get back Mira. So that's going to be... So that tells me that season two is going to be largely focused on that, or at least the next episode. Yeah, it's going to well, yeah. And then Mira will probably just join them for adventure. <laughs> I don't want to spoil what the next season is, but I will say that it is a pretty significant narrative change from this first season. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm still looking forward to watching it because I, I, I really there's like it's so much different and so much really cool shit in there. I can't wait to get to it. I person, I personally thought that this was a magnificent uh, end to the series uh, to the season because like I've mentioned in the, our first part and I mentioned in the, in this like recording as well I like I, I really like the detail of seeing a pre-evolution like a, and the current evolution of man in the same like living in the same era because it's night it's interesting to see the differences. This time, however, we see the next. Uh, I was Cro-Magnon before, right before Homo Sapien. Um, 
Well, well like, so we assume that he's a Neanderthal. Which oh, sorry, that's what I meant. Is Neanderthal like they the yeah, precursor we, they to... existed like right at the same time as Homo sapiens, and then eventually Homo sapiens just completely wiped them out. Yeah, but they, yeah. They, but yeah, they were like, they were, the, they were, they yeah, were the there precursor. was a little bit of crossover between those two species. Yeah, but they and were pretty much Homo the, sapiens the precursor one yeah. because yeah, Homo sapiens one because they're smarter. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, but but this time it's not it's not spear is the evolutionary like top. We meet someone who is a Homo sapien, who is the next step in evolution, or and now our current step of yeah. evolution, and it's just fascinating that they turn that on its head, and you know they because because she's you know like you said Homo sapiens had the intellect. They may not have been as big and strong as the Neanderthal, but they actually had the intelligence and could use their brain for things, as we saw with her traveling with them and. She didn't even need to communicate with him with words because, you know, she tried and failed. But as we saw with her drawing the pictures and stuff, she was able to gather just by the way they were acting uh, and the way, you know, so that she was able to establish like, OK, they're good people. She met them where they're at. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they actually made that, and it's just like, it's so great to see that. And she was only in one episode, and I already like her as a character she because... She's very fun, very Yeah, cool. she's definitely a good, a, a good uh, companion to this group. And she immediately got kidnapped, um, and we'll find out what that is in season two, what yeah. kidnapped her, but... Yeah, apparently just, we're in, uh, apparently we're in a time period where like we have you know, Homo sapiens that exist. They have developed an entire language, in this case Arabic, and also have developed the technology for making sailboats. Yeah, well, also as like fucking the dinosaurs alone is ridiculous because there are several species that shouldn't even exist at the same time as each other. Right. Um, right. Also, they shouldn't exist at all with any kind of Homo sapien because they should have way long died out. Uh, but I yeah, mean, uh, you know. uh, onto that another dumb random fact I always love bringing up. Um, the distance between Stegosaurus and Tyrannosaurus is longer than the distance between Tyrannosaurus and right now. Really? Huh. Yeah, we're closer to when Tyrannosaurus is were than Stegosaurus is were to Tyrannosaurus. Huh. Huh. But there's tons of different breeds of dinosaurs that are coexisting in this show that should not have. I'll be like, they were tens of millions of years apart. So I don't mean, even try to you know. uh, don't even try to figure out <laughs> when this show takes place. <laughs> gotta have some creative freedom. Really, the man bats weren't enough. Of course not. You need magic and <laughs> no, 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 no. zombie plagues. Hey, 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 some creative freedom. You know, the giant spider. Of course, yeah. Well, there's gonna be more next season. To trust me, it's gonna be oh, yeah. even fucking weirder. Um, I've only seen a few clips. Because uh, before I watched the show, I saw mm-hmm. random clips from both first and second season. So I know very little about certain aspects about this one. But you know what? There's, it's no fun if I bring that stuff up. Oh, of course. Well, there's, well, when you get context for it, you're going to be like, holy shit, because there's some fucking insane stuff that I can't wait to get into. Yeah. <laughs> you thought the, the theory crafting for the Night Feeder was fun. You fucking wait till see what we're going to see next season. <laughs> oh, boy. But, um, yeah, but... Whew. This was a good block of episodes. This yeah. was a very good season finale. Hell yeah. I am glad you enjoyed it. I'm very much looking forward to covering the next season. Absolutely. Ooh, it's going to be fun. It will. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, any other comments before we do our no, shameless plugs? No, amazing episode. I, there's lots of speculation to have for the next part of the season. I'm probably going to watch it immediately, as I always say, because I love doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, we can sh- sh- just wrap this up for now, because we we're, we're longer than the last episode or our last one episode right now, I think. So let's um, wrap this up and get ready to go. So, uh, hey, Chris. What's your plugs? Oh boy, I love this part. Okay, it's time for my shameless plug list. Number one, end of list. Oh, finally, he's done. Well, I know, I, man. I, I just wait. I, I'm sorry. I'm me. sorry. I'm, I'm just. I have hey. such an amazing presence on the internet. I just had to spend hours talking about it. Okay. Hey, Matt, <laughs> I think I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna do my first ever editing and just cut out all of Chris's plugs. Hey, there, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> he went on for hours, but I, I, we need to shorten this episode. Absolutely. So Matt, yeah, that, that's exactly plugs. what See, happened. Do me a favor, Matt. Yeah. Can you stop hitting the skip button from Stanley Parable? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. However, for me as well. I may have mentioned in our uh, more recent Spawn episode that's been released, um, I don't have any shameless plugs, unfortunately, and all of my uh, current, like, ideas for, like, podcasts and stuff like that are like uh, like the Spawn movie that we talked about back then in development hell right now because there's just... Too much for me to think about right now before oh, yeah. I can do also, that stuff. Also, life, as usual, gets in the way. Yeah, <laughs> moving life, life uh, uh, finds a way. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, Now, Matt, take it away. Yeah, Matthew Lewis Podcast, YouTube, Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, 
Uh, fucking Forgotten Minotaur King, uh, Old Action Tune Bros, uh, fucking, uh, what, all movie garbage. Check out all my shit. Fucking like, comment, and subscribe. Buy my book. <laughs> I'm speeding it up these days. Uh, but also, yeah, a little thing for viewers and listeners. We are gonna probably end up switching things up recording-wise because we do have some moving stuff we're gonna be dealing with. So expect some weird changes in the recording. Maybe the quality will be better. Who knows? <laughs> maybe better. May, uh, may maybe worse. But I mean, we're gonna be working on stuff. We're gonna be working on stuff. But you know. Um, not going into details, but things are happening where the way we record these episodes are going to change a little bit. But, mm -hmm. of course, we're going to try our best to make sure that you guys have a very good listening uh, scenario going on here. Oh, yeah. Remote but, recording's going to be fun. It's going to be... Well, hopefully it'll be better than that fucking uh, Young Justice season finale oh, we did. Fuck. <laughs> that got real fucked that, up. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll see. Hey, hey, hey. It's like Bruno. We don't speak of that. No, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and listen to that episode because it was honestly great. Fucking edit the whole this whole ending, <laughs> re-record -re -re it. Yeah, um, sure. Actually, Chris, when he's doing his shameless plugs, I feel like we need to edit in like some kind of fiddle music going on while he just does all of the shameless <laughs> plugs to where it just ends right when he's done. <laughs> oh my god! Someday, if we ever do editing for this thing, uh, but you, yeah, you mean gonna, if you ever do yeah, editing yeah, for yeah, this? Yeah. Well, hey, I've I've, I've done it in past. Little, uh, eagle eyed listeners, see if you can find what I cut out of people saying. <laughs> Yeah, just look at that Young Justice season finale we don't talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. You guys don't even know how much work I actually had to do for that episode. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> He's told me about it. But yes, anyway. <laughs> Wrapping this up. Uh, wow. Fun episode, fun series. Can't wait to get back to it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, uh, so let's see. From us to you at Movie Garbage. I don't it's know not, what the fuck. I'm not. tired. I don't know what day it is. What, where am I? <laughs> what year okay, is first it? Off, it's oh my 1985. God, <laughs> Secondly, we're doing Action Toon movies. Action Toon movies. <laughs> wait. Who the hell is that coming up? Oh, oh my he god. He finally made it back up. Oh, no! God. No! Not with Curly's glove! Tony, get out of here! <laughs> hey, it's me, okay? They listen to the episode! Hey, get his baby! No, that's his! That's their. Oh, whatever. Who's there, Gambit? <laughs>